bespoke radio for the masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network. I need your help to get to the year 1985. You're listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Good evening, Fade to Black. Bespoke radio for the masses. Uh, yeah, man, how you doing? How you doing? All right. Today's Monday, September 26, 2022. I would like to welcome everybody listening all around the world, all across the United States. Hither and thither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west, north and south, far and near. This is Fade to Black for KJCR, the Game Changer, and Unex Networks, Ray's Hobbs. I am your host, Jimmy Church. What is cracking, everybody? How you doing? How you doing? All right. Tonight, yeah, <laughs> bombshell week. Tonight, very special guest, Grant Cameron, kicks off our bombshell Wilson Davis week here on Fade to Black. Tomorrow night, our guest is me. Tomorrow night, I'm going to do a two and a half hour deep dive into the Wilson Davis documents, uh, the associated notes that have been uh, revealed to the public this week. Um, That happened uh, throughout the day today, so I'm not... I'm not the first to uh, release the documents or anything like that. It's been going on all over the net today. So there you go. You know, it's not any type of exclusive because everybody has them. But uh, tomorrow night, I'm going to go through all of it. I'm going to go through the uh, uh, Wilson Davis document and uh, with my thoughts and, of course, the notes <clears throat> that tie into all of this. It's uh, pretty extraordinary. It's a pretty extraordinary week. Uh, For the UFO community, it's absolutely amazing. And then following up uh, with our bombshell week will be Wednesday night. Richard Dolan is here for Wilson Davis night three. And uh, and a a couple of notes about uh, uh, Grant and Richard and myself. uh, uh, I'll, I'll talk more about this in just a bit. But when everything started to bust loose. Oh, man, I'm trying to think that was like three years ago. Um, uh, I, I had a call with Richard that night uh, that we uh, got uh, uh, the Wilson Davis document sent to us. And we knew then that uh, they were extraordinary. And, and reading through them, Richard and I that night uh, went through page for page. Uh, going through everything and just catching things. and But there was a name in there that I wasn't familiar with, and that was Oak Shannon. Uh, Richard knew who Oak Shannon was, and, of course, so did uh, Grant Cameron. I did not. And, uh, well, uh, today, I think we all know, uh, Project Unity uh, did an interview with Oak Shannon uh, that uh, came out on the net a couple of days ago. I watched that interview. Uh, well, I watched it a fourth time. So uh, four times I've watched it. I watched it again today. Um, wow. I mean, just the, the whole, the whole thing has come full circle and uh, it's very exciting uh, for our UFO community. It's a big week here on fade to black. So tonight, 
The man that's been at the center of all of this is Grant Cameron. And Grant will be with us tonight. He did a live stream earlier today with Nicole Sakic. Uh, I was there for that. Uh, it was it was just amazing. And uh, and whew, Grant, that's all I have to say. Grant Cameron, and uh, very excited that uh, he is on with us tonight. It's very important that uh, not only uh, it when we do a week on the show uh, about something, and and in this case, it's Wilson Davis. Uh, it's very important to me and, and to the community that Grant um, is is up first. He's the leadoff batter because he's been at the center of this uh, from the very beginning. And I'll talk more about this in just a bit. And then on Thursday night this week, it is another fader night with open lines all night long. Coming up, I will be hosting and emceeing the Conscious Life Expo this February 10th through the 13th at the LAX Hilton. Tickets and info are at ConsciousLifeExpo.com. Coming up right after that, April 7th through the 14th, 2023, I will be hosting and presenting on the Hidden Secrets Seminar at Sea Cruise with Scott Walter, Adam Apollo, Nick Pope, Brad Olson, and Vivian Chavez, and a bunch of other great speakers and guests. And the links for everything are below. Come in and go on a cruise with me. Let's go down to Mexico. What do you say? All right. Also, uh, over the weekend, I uh, I got a new camera, uh, added some lights, and 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 worked on the studio this weekend. And I did an impromptu live stream uh, testing the camera just to see what everybody's thoughts were, and I needed feedback. And <laughs> and so I had to go back and adjust everything. But I think it looks pretty good, and uh, I'll continue to dial it in. How's it look? See? Now it's, it's, it's high def. You can see. Now I got to shave every day. Man, I got to brush my teeth. I got to comb my hair. I got to wear a clean shirt. It's just too, it's too perfect. But it's all for you guys, okay? I just want you to have the best thing possible. And and hopefully you guys uh, agree that uh, the camera uh, uh, was worth it, okay? And uh, there you go. It's a Elgato face cam. That's what it is. Okay, get your free membership to the Unex Network at unexnetwork.com. You'll receive their monthly newsletter. You're going to get blog accesses. You're going to get event notices, free digital copy of their quarterly magazine. All you have to do is go to unexnetwork.com. Go to the homepage. It's right there, membership sign up. It's all completely free. And right now, heading into the winter months, Eden Pure has extended their three-pack special. That's right, three-pack special on the thunderstorm. And uh, a couple, can I, can, I, can I say something? I know that um, I share a lot of personal information sometimes, and I, and I probably shouldn't let all of that go. But I've been working out. And uh, two weeks ago, it cooled down here. I thought winter is here, right? Winter is coming. And it cooled down and then it heated back up this week. And I got to tell you, I stink. (laughs) I mean, they're working out and it, it smells, you know, and, and I got to tell you, the only thing that gets rid of it is this right here. I'm not spraying stuff in my house. I'm not, well, I burn sage. I do. I sage the house all the time. It's the Eden, Eden pure thunderstorm. That makes my house perfect. It's a AC. It's got a USB on the side. It kills germs. It kills viruses. And it'll just make your house smell great. And they have a three-pack special right now. Three. Three. So this is my thing. Bedroom, kitchen, living room. That's that's where you start. Or uh, bedroom, kitchen, car. Right? That's what you do. It's got a USB. You can do whatever you want with it. So there you go. Three-pack special, promo code FADER3. Right now, save $200 in free shipping. Scroll down, click, head over. You forget the promo code? What do you do? Just click on my name on the bottom. It's, it's right there, Jimmy Church. 
Click on that and everything is done. All right. Follow me on Twitter at J Church Radio. Yeah. Follow me. Follow me. Man, I love coffee. Did you guys know I love coffee? <laughs> what a crazy news day today. Let's start with this. The Artemis 1 space launch system and its rocket will be pulled down from the launch pad in Florida and rolled back to the vehicle assembly building tonight due to Hurricane Ian. The massive rocket will begin the rollback process later this evening at 11 p.m. Eastern time, further delaying the anticipated mission. There's already been two delays. This is now the third. No uh, no launch dates have been announced yet, but as you know, I'm completely on top of this. Other big news today, Coca-Cola in the news, because Coca-Cola products ranging from Diet Coke and Sprite to Powerade and Monster Energy drinks will replace its plastic rings, you know, on the six packs, the four packs, with a fiber-based paper packaging. The Coca-Cola estimates that it will help eliminate 75,000 pounds of plastic each year. The paper-based packaging designed by Graphic Packaging International is small, compact, and easy to recycle. And that's big news, at least to me. That's big news. Big news for the world. Now, check this out. Mayans. Mayans in the news. Toxic levels of mercury. A pollutant commonly associated with waste of modern industry have been uncovered in Mayan archaeological sites. Long before conquistadors from far-off lands introduced the decay of war and disease, Maya cultures were dusting the soils of their urban centers with the heavy metal mercury. The elements levels are so great in some areas, researchers are being advised to gear up to save their health. Together with a team of researchers from the U.S. and the U.K., Duncan Cook of Australian Catholic University revealed data sets collected from 10 classic period Maya dig sites and their surrounds that included environmental measurements of mercury levels. A comparison of readings from across the region identified seven of the sites reported at least one area contaminated with a concentration of mercury that exceeds or equals modern benchmarks for toxic levels. Absolutely incredible. All right, now check this out. Plants are older than we're told. Now listen to this. The oldest green algae preserved in three dimensions may hint that plants originated earlier than previously believed. The fossils are older than 541 million years. This was at the cusp of the Cambrian period, 541, 541 million to 485 million years ago, when life suddenly diversified in a flash known as the Cambrian explosion. The fossils are tiny, only a half a millimeter in diameter, but are preserved in exquisite detail down to the bumpy tubular structures that line their outer layers and the masses of delicate filaments that make up their core. They come from the, uh, the Shanxi province in central China. Now, researchers, uh, China's back in the news, so <laughs> here you go. Uh, I hope you're ready for this. Researchers in China have cloned a wild Arctic wolf. And they're hoping the controversial genetic technology can now be used to help save other species under threat as the world edges toward an extinction crisis. Today, the Beijing-based company uh, Sinogene Biotechnology unveiled the female wolf clone named Maya by scientists marking 100 days since she was born back on June 10th. Maya, a gray-brown pup with a bushy tail, is in healthy condition, and they showed videos of Maya playing and resting. That's crazy. A Florida man. (laughs) 
Uh, although this is not a funny news story, but it does start off with a Florida man. So here we go. A Florida man, an HOA president, already facing charges for allegedly keeping a hidden camera inside the master bedroom of a Palm Coast condo he was caring for, faces additional charges after a third victim was recorded on camera in a different condo. The Flagler County Sheriff's Office arrested Robert W. Orr for the second time today on an additional five charges, including three counts of video voyeurism and two counts of unlawful use of a two-way communications device. Orr, who's 59 years old, was arrested earlier this month on four counts of video voyeurism after a woman and a man found a USB camera hidden inside an indoor flower pot in the master bedroom of the condo they were renting that he was maintaining and managing. Deputies said that some of the images date back to 2018. So now... They are contacting, and I'm quoting here, dozens of people who have also rented the condos over the last four years. <laughs> A Florida man. Let's get this show cracking on this day in history. 1969. One of the greatest days in history. The Brady Bunch premieres on ABC. ABC, who canceled the series five years later. The last original episode aired on August 30th, 1974. However, the show became a massive hit in rerun rerun syndication. And I got to tell you, I think probably I've seen every episode of The Brady Bunch at least five times. (laughs) It's a fact. Here's Here's a fader fact for you, though. It's a good one. They're all good. I say that every night. It's a good one. They're all good. It's a good one. They're all good. Here's your fader fact. In the 13th century, Pope Gregory the Fourth declared war on cats. That's right. He declared war on cats because he believed they were instruments of Satan. And that is your fader fact. Yeah. Tonight, very special guest, Grant Cameron. Grant Cameron is here kicking off the Wilson Davis week here on Fade to Black. Bombshell week. Tomorrow night, our guest is me. I'm going to take you on a two and a half hour deep dive into the Wilson Davis documents and the notes of Oak Shannon and others. That have also been revealed this week to the public. It's a huge week for the UFO community. And to follow up and close out Bombshell Week, Wilson Davis Week, Richard Dolan is here on Wednesday for night three. Thursday night is another fader night with open lines all night long. So there you go. All right. Now it's time for me to hit this River Moon coffee for real. RiverMoonWellness.com. I like my coffee, Doc. But, Dad, it's smoky. Sarah Ann, that's messed up. <laughs> About Pope Gregory the <laughs> Fourth. That's a good gift. Thank you. Hey, Sarah Ann, that's going to get a like right now. Just like that. Rivermoonwellness.com. The links are below. Promo code F2B Blend. It's the best coffee in the world. It is. It's just, there's a lot of good coffee out there, but there's only the best, and that's Rivermoon Fade to Black Blend and Game Changer Blend, too. All right. You like this camera? It's big. 
my other cameras that I have here, right? They're small. I, I posted pictures uh, yesterday, or was it today? Yesterday. And uh, look at the top of my monitors. You'll see, you know, the cameras. And I have other cameras that aren't up here all the time. Uh, they're on stands and, and stuff, right? Okay, so anyway, um, but you can see the Elgato in the middle. You see what I'm talking about, man? Things big. It's big. It's big. So I had to lower the monitors because the camera, it was like, you know, so I lowered. I kind of like it, though. I like what's going on. All right, F2B blank. Go to the Amazon store. You know what I did today before I uh, uh, get into what I want to talk about? Uh, today, No, it was yesterday. I don't want to fib. I want to be straight. Yesterday, I sent fade to black blend to somebody. They know who they are. And, um, you know, a little thank you. And... I've got to send it through the Amazon store. That's right. I pay for it myself. Click, click, went to Amazon, and it's right there. Amazon's choice, fade to black blend. I was like, wow, how cool is that? Click, 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 send. That's right. Pay for it myself. That's it, man. The growls. <laughs> oh, my God. What the? I don't see anything. Did you guys hear that? What the? <laughs> see, here's the thing. There's a noise gate. See, and you can hear the noise gate shut down. Listen. Right? See how it goes silent? The noise gate shuts down the microphone. You hear it go? Right? You hear that? So if it's coming through with the noise gate... I don't know what to say, man. Okay. All right. I gotta, I, I gotta focus. That was a trip. I swear. I'm hearing things. I'm hearing things. I'm like freaking myself out. All right. Today, <clears throat> the dart mission was a success. I watched the live stream uh, right after uh, uh, Grant and Nicole did their live stream. And, you know, I was working and, and getting stuff done. And I had the dart mission running in the background. Finally, you know, it was like 15 minutes away. And I'm just sitting there watching it with that music that was playing. Were you guys listening to that? Well, anyway, we are truly living in a science fiction movie. Watching the dart, this was straight out of any movie that you can imagine. And we watched that live. Was that the most incredible? And 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 when when you saw the asteroid off in the distance, right? And it's a little dot, you know, and it's and you're like, how how is this possible? Right? And there it is. And, and what did you guys freak out at what the uh, the asteroid looked like? It looked like a coronavirus. <laughs> it was all spiky and stuff. How crazy was that? To think that technology today, that and, and all of our hopes and dreams about being able to fly out to an asteroid and blow it up or divert its path and and save Earth, right? That's science fiction. Science fiction, we'll never get there. No way. But it's a good movie, right? I'll watch Bruce Willis do that. That's a good movie. It happened today. I couldn't believe it. I just, the thoughts going through my mind as that asteroid was, and I, you, I know your mind was in the same place mine was. You're watching that thing come up, and you're like, man, this, this is a movie, but it's real. <laughs> it was nuts, and I really enjoyed it, and I, I can't say enough for that. And then, going on at the same time, we have the latest revelations in the UFO community. Things are really popping at the moment, and the, the Wilson Davis document, when that thing surfaced, 
And my comment back then, I've always felt that the document was real. Well, I know that the document is real. I'm talking about the conversation that happened in the back of a U.S. government crown Vic behind the EG&G building in Las Vegas next to the McCarran Airport with the Janet aircraft taking off, going to Area 51. And you picture this conversation going down between Admiral Wilson and, and Eric Davis about UFOs. And you read through that, and it's just like a movie script. You know, it's incredible. And I always felt that the conversation happened. It was too detailed. There was just things about it. I always felt that way about it. I've done many shows, right, with uh, Project Unity and this conversation with Oak Shannon and uh, uh, the revelation of the notes uh, that are out there. And uh, excuse me. The notes, uh, there's a two se- two version, two sections of the notes, which I have tonight. You'll see them. Um, uh, that is this all starting to support not only the Wilson Davis document, but the shenanigans that have been going on um, inside of not only our government and certain circles inside of the government, but but companies and corporations that are looking to develop this technology and research and development. Well, that was the basis of the Wilson Davis document. And that is, of course, is uh, the subject of the notes uh, that are out. I don't know how many pages I have here. I have two sections of it. I think there's 28 and 18, whatever, whatever that adds up to. Uh, but you look at this and that's what's going on. And that, what a strange day where um, I, I spent the day reading these notes, going back over the Wilson Davis documents, knowing what the subject was tonight, Grant Cameron being on the show, and the DART mission happening. And I'm watching that, and I'm just like, this is, I'm living the future that I was hoping I would live. And I'm experiencing it right now. It's a very important week here on Fade to Black. We're all doing this together. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, Grant Cameron is with us. He will be up right after this short break. I'll be right back with Grant Cameron Bombshell Week, night one. On the Game Changer and Unex Networks, Race Hobbs, I'm your host, Jimmy Church. And I'll be right back with Grant Cameron. Stay with us. Nicole Church, daughter of you know who, and you're listening to Fade to Black on JimmyChurchRadio.com and the Game Changer Network. You're listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the X. You're listening to Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. Fade to Black will now pause for alien identification. The station that talks the net. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of fate to black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the fade to black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of fate to black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied, dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2B Blend for 15% off of your order today. 
This is the only way forward. This is Fade to Black. Make contact. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and you can get our podcast for just $2 per month. All you have to do is click on the podcast banner over at jimmychurchradio.com. Hello, Fader Knots. Jimmy Church here. You've seen me with my thunderstorm. Now you can purify the air in your home and get healthy, clean, fresh smelling air and eliminate odors just like I do right here in the bunker. The Eden Pier Thunderstorm uses oxy technology that naturally sends out O3 molecules into the air, which seek out odors and air pollutants in your home and destroys them. It's called a thunderstorm because it purifies the air just like after a thunderstorm. And right now, you can save $200 on an Eden Pier Thunderstorm 3 pack for whole home protection. With this special offer, you're getting three units for under $200. Seriously. Go to EdenPureDeals.com and use Fader 3. Shipping is free, and it's easy. Just scroll down. You'll see my name right there, Jimmy Church. Click on it and get your deal today. That's EdenPureDeals.com. Do you have an interest in the paranormal? Then you'll love the UnXNetwork.com. The X is your streaming audio and video for everything supernatural, strange, and mysterious, like UFOs, Bigfoot, ghosts, and so much more. From hosts like Jimmy Church, Whitley Strieber, Micah Hanks, and Christina Gomez, visit the UnXNetwork.com show page for a complete list of all the paranormal programs you'll find on the X. Be sure to follow us on Twitter for updates at KUNXDB. Follow our Facebook group, UnX Network. Find the podcast on Spotify, iHeart, Audible, and Apple Podcasts. It's time. It's new. It's the X. 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 Nine out of ten geneticists agree. Fade to Black is not your father's radio show. On the Game Changer Radio Network. Hi, this is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This is Kyle Manson. You're listening to Jimmy Church Radio. All right, welcome back. Fade to Black, I'm your Jimmy Church. Tonight, Grant Cameron kicking off Bombshell Week, night one. We're going to discuss all of the recent bombshells around the Wilson Davis document and Oak Shannon. This is night one of our Wilson Davis Week here on Fade to Black. Grant has been a UFO researcher since 1975, and he was recognized as both the Leeds Conference International Researcher of the Year and the UFO Congress Researcher of the Year. He's a world-renowned expert on UFOs, conspiracies, government cover-ups, and has spent decades watching and chronicling developments around the extraterrestrial contact. He is the author of Charlie Red Star. His website is beyondpresidentialufo.com. The links are below. And I would like to welcome back to Fade to Black, uh, kicking off night one of Grant Cameron Week here on Fade to Black. <laughs> Mr. Grant Cameron. Grant, how you doing, my man? Great, Jimmy. Thanks for having me on. Uh, busy day for you, my friend. I, I, I've yeah. been, I, I've been, uh, I, I feel like we've been talking all day. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it reminded me, I, I reminded uh, Nicole of this earlier today. If you've ever seen the, um, uh, the, sh the uh, comedy skit done by, now I've got to forget his name, uh, uh, Bill Hicks. The roller coaster, you ever seen the one about the life of the I, roller coaster? You yes. get on, you go up and down, around and around, and it makes lots of noise, and you get off, and once you once you're off, you go, oh, it was just a ride. <laughs> That's what it was like. Today was a roller coaster, man, up and down. Yeah, and uh it started to heat up now. Here, um uh uh Grant, let me uh, I'm I'm just gonna go back to some historical context, uh if I may. Uh some personal historical context between the the two of us. Yeah. Um, and you had uh, three years ago, uh, you came up to me um, at a conference and you said, Jimmy, this is my attorney. And I was like, oh, 
<laughs> I'm getting <laughs> served, right? <laughs> so anyway, you come up and you say, this is my attorney. I had to lawyer up. And I said, what's going on? And and you were shaking. Yeah. And and I was like, Grant, what's, what, what's happening? He said, I, I've got these documents, man. And uh, uh, we're going to talk about it. I need a, a, a couple of weeks to digest it, but we're going to figure this out. And I'll let you know. I was like, "What? what's going on, Grant? Well, at that time, uh, around that time, Richard Dolan and I receive uh, uh, the, the, the now infamous uh, email, famous email, uh, with the documents in it. I called, uh, and you remember all of this so well, I called Richard going, dude, and I read through the documents page uh, for page with Richard, and we made mental notes, and we continued the next day. But then I called you, and I said, dude, did you send this to me? You said no. And I said, uh, "This is is this the doc? Yes, I, I believe at the time, and this is for the audience so they understand, you were being very evasive um, of, uh, on purpose, right? And you were like, Jimmy, I don't know if you're looking at is the documents that I'm talking about. And I'm like, well, I don't know if you're talking about what I'm talking about, but I think we're talking about the same thing, right? I think we are. Um, and then everything broke loose uh, from that first night. Um, I, I saw your email uh, to Oak, Shannon, uh, with the question, did you have any idea when you were a kid, right? Yeah. That uh, you would you, you you would have documents that would now be part of uh, the congressional record. Well, I'm going to pose the same question to you, Grant. Did you feel at that time, even though you were shaking, that it would have the historical importance that it does today, and what is going on with uh, the UFO community? I thought it would have tremendous uh, significance. It was the um, document, the only document I've ever seen that I was absolutely determined I have to get this document, no matter what it takes to get this document, because it was shown to me by James Rigney on an iPad, and he walked off in the casino. We were in in, in Laughlin, and when I saw Oak Shannon's name and Eric Davis's name, I knew it was a real document. I knew this was for real. I read just part of the first page, and then I started to think, how do I get this document? I wonder if I can photograph this thing before he comes back so I can at least have this thing. I didn't realize it was 15 pages. When I realized, I thought it was two pages. So when James sent it to me shortly after this November conference, um, I that's when I started to shake. I went, oh, my God. And then I talked to... to, to um, um, uh, uh, the attorney, um, Michael Hall, Michael Hall. So I, I contacted Michael Hall in the beginning of January and I said, Michael, I've got, I got to talk to you about, about something. And then I did, then I said, Oh, that's stupid. Why did I talk to him like this? You know, I was really scared because I, I, I was afraid of what was going to happen. And then when I finally got a hold of uh, Michael, he came back and then he, I said to him, I said, I got a question. Could I get sued? If could they sue me for this? He said, yeah, they could. And I went, they could. And and then he said, well, no, but you can get sued for anything. And then I'm saying like, you know, I, you know, I know all these guys, I don't know what to do with this document. And that was the whole idea that, um, we, I, I eventually put them through, um, Chase Williams who had come to me. And then, then I decided I, I couldn't put them on myself because I knew all these guys and I didn't want to sort of cut their throat. So, and then I said, well, I will, um, I'm a disclosure guy. So anybody wants to see the document, because I was telling people, no, you can't see the document. People like um, James Ian Dolly asked me, can I see the document? I said, no, you can't see the document. And then I'm thinking, what's the heck? I'm, I'm a disclosure guy. What's the deal? So next time uh, Chase Williams said, can I see the document? I said, sure, you want to see the document? And I sent it to him. And then he said, well, why don't you release this? And I said, well, because I know all these guys. And then he said, uh, leave it with me. And then he phoned me from an elevator. I still remember he was in Chicago. He said he was traveling. He was in Chicago. He said, I'm in an elevator in Chicago. You know those documents you gave me? And I said, yeah, I think they just went on the internet. But then they sat on the internet for four months. And we were trying to figure out like, I mean, is people stupid? Why don't they pick this up? What do we do? And James Rigney was bugging me. And I said, James, my job, you gave me my job was to get these things out. I did it. I got them on the internet. I can't do any more for you. You got to figure it out for yourself. And then you guys discovered the document and that's when it sort of went viral. And so I knew it was, I knew it was, I had always said when this document becomes public, 
it's over. This is going to be disclosure. But I didn't realize it would be read into Congress and that this would basically be, it looks like it's almost going to be a blueprint for where they go because it's got the names and I guess they're investigating who these people are and, and all this kind of stuff. And there's this immunity for witnesses. So if all the witnesses in the, the Wilson document come forward and get immunity, I mean, it's what I said originally. It's game over. When, when I saw the document, that's what I thought. This is game over. I mean, if this document ever gets out, but the thing was, how do how do you get it out? Because uh, I, I I knew the people and I, I I knew what the what the cost would be because I I talked to Eric Davis before and I knew they talked about it was called intelligence blowback. There's this story that's told. I come to you, Jimmy, and I say, Jimmy, do you know the twelve guys that run the U, uh, the whole UFO show? And you say, Yeah, I know who they are. And then I say to you, Okay, Jimmy, why didn't you make the names public? And then the answer is because you go to the New York Times. They would print an article and I'd have to deny it and nobody would ever talk to me again. And that's why a lot of these guys, I believe, are very secret because they're trying to figure it out as well. And they're trying to get people above them to tell them what's going on. And the minute they leak something like I did, then nobody talks to you anymore. So when I had the document, um, you guys discovered it later. But uh, like uh, Giuliano Marinkovic had it. Uh, Danny Silva had it. James Ian Dolly had it. And I remember James phoning me and he said, you talked to me about that document in January. And I said, yeah. And he said, I think it just went on the internet. And I said, oh, really? And he said, I said, how many pages is it? And he said, it's 15 pages. And I said, uh, yeah, it sounds like the document. I didn't want to play. And then he said, Danny Silva's got it and he may release it. I said, you tell Danny Silva this. If you release this document, you will be the most famous person probably in history, but nobody will ever talk to you again. And that was the warning. And then Danny Silva hang, hang on to it. So all, there was a lot of people had the document, but nobody wanted to do it. Nobody wanted to sort of put it out there. And so it sat on the internet for quite a while before Richard and you finally, and it was being sent by um, James because James had come to me and said, well, you know, nobody's reading it. What, what are you going to do? And I said, well, James, this is your game. You don't know all these guys. You can release it. So we showed him how to set up the account, whatever that account was, where mm -hmm. you you, you, nobody knows who you are. So mm -hmm. he set up the account and he started to send it to people. So he sent it to you and he sent it to Richard and he sent it to uh, James Fox and he sent it to all these people. I said, this is your job. You can send it out. So you got it from James Rigney. He was doing the, the, the job of putting it out because nobody was reading it. It was on the internet. Nobody was picking up on it. Yeah, that, <clears throat> what was weird and uh, we'll, we'll jump forward uh, in, in just a bit. But what was weird was there uh, there was a mention of Stephen Greer, you know, in the document uh, about the Pentagon meeting. And so the next day uh, uh, after I got it, I called Greer and I said, I've got I've got this document. He didn't, you know, Greer, right? The document king. Yeah. He he didn't know what I was talking about. I said, your name is in it. And uh, so I sent it to Greer. Uh, that the document. Uh, it, it, it didn't spread. You're absolutely right. It was, it was, it was pretty strange. It was pretty when Richard strange. Richard got it. It started to move when Richard made mention of it. And he of course phoned some of the people who were in the document and said, okay, I got this document and he got some confirmations. Well, and well, I knew that he was on your show. And I mentioned this before. Yeah. I remember at one point you had interviewed Richard in December. I think it was December the 18th or 19th of the year before the document broke two pages. Yeah, and he, that's what he said. And yeah. and James Rigney phoned me from Australia, and he said, did you give the document to Dolan? And I said, no, I didn't give the document to Dolan. He said, well, he's talking about it. I said, what do you mean he's talking about it? He's on Jimmy Church's show. He's talking about the document. So I went and I listened. And I went, he is talking about the document. I'm thinking, right. maybe I did give him the document. How does he know? And then he said it was the two pages, and that is right. one of the most confirming parts of the story was that Richard was live on the air before we leaked the document, and he was saying that he had seen two pages of this document, and he describes the Wilson document. There's no doubt. And he, he had had it for a long time, those two pages. Yeah, uh, I think it was okay. 10 years ago. 10, 10 years ago years. he'd seen it. Yeah, yeah 10 years. 10 years prior. It would, would have been 13 years ago. When yeah. he was on the show, he said uh, 10 years at that point. Um, and I remember I canceled all of my plans for Coast that week, and I did the Wilson Davis uh, document uh, that, that Friday night. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, you're right. You're right. Right after that, pfft, it yeah. uh, it just completely took off. Well, okay, so here's the thing. Um, uh, you, I had never heard of Oak Shannon. And, uh, but when Richard and I uh, were talking that first night on the phone, uh, and, and you as well, Richard uh, zeroed in on Oak Shannon. 
And I, 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 at the time I didn't know, um, was, uh, and uh, Oak Shannon, you have, you had mentioned to me prior and I didn't realize that Oak was who he was in the center of all of this, but having him being part of the Wilson Davis document, like he is. And then of course, this interview with project unity, which was a fantastic interview, uh, just incredible, but to have somebody come forward from this document and speak about it, that's extraordinary in of itself, isn't it? Yeah. And then that was what was significant to me when I saw the first page of the document and I saw Oak Shannon's name and Eric Davis's name, I knew for a fact that I was probably one of the few people in the world who knew Oak Shannon was. And Oak Shannon is not a major player. So that may be why nobody knows who he is. So he was not like, if you take a look at the list in this new Oak Shannon notes, you'll see a lot of the Avery names, you know, the, the old boys, boys that keep, you know, recycling over and over again. But Oak Shannon was just a guy who was there because he worked at Los Alamos or yeah, Los Alamos National Labs. And that's where John Alexander worked. And they were both there at the same time. And John was running this, uh, UFO, what they call, used to call the UFO working group. And um, Oak Shannon was brought in, but he, Oak Shannon was not a major figure. He was not a UFO guy. He described to uh, Project Unity the fact that he, had, were, he and his friend were working on this, this uh, five-dimensional universe theory and stuff like that. But he was not a UFO guy. He'd had a UFO sighting later on. But he was not the UFO guy. He was not. He was not in the crowd with 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 uh, put off and green and all those guys. He was just sort of on the outside. And he knew Eric Davis, and that's what I knew. So I knew he knew Eric Davis, and I, so I knew that this was the real. And that's why I immediately knew this was the the real deal document. And um, it turned out it it was significant in that Oak Shannon was the guy that put the whole thing together. So his only connection to this whole thing was that Wilson was was given an opportunity to talk to Davis and he was he was sort of screening him to see whether he was going to talk to him. And that's when he asked Oak Shannon, do you know this D Eric Davis guy? What do you think of him? Oh, he's reliable. You can keep his mouth shut, all this kind of stuff. And that's why Wilson talked to Eric Davis. So that's the role that 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 uh, Oak Shannon played, but he was not really involved in anything. He was just happened to be involved in this uh, uh, advanced physics theoretical working group from 1985 with John Alexander and these all these 20 guys with top secret special compartmental uh, uh, access uh, clearances who talked about UFOs and were trying to get funding, the same as, as what's going on now, where they're trying to get the funding through Congress. All this in, in 1985 thing that we're going to talk about was exactly the same thing. They were trying to get money out of Congress. They were trying to build a program. They were trying to get evidence to prove that UFOs should be studied, and they, it, they, it ended up falling flat. John Alexander couldn't get any money. And that, and so Oak was involved, but he was not a major player as far as I know. He doesn't give any presentations. He doesn't say anything in, in the UFO. You, you see the notes. He doesn't really talk about anything. He's just taking notes. And he takes 20, I think it's 26 pages. So there's 24 pages of notes. Then there's the cover page. And there's the page of the, you know, the diagram of how to get to this uh, skiff. They were in a, in a skiff in Virginia, in a, in a, in a uh, compartmentalized uh, facility in Virginia. So um, that was his role, but not a major role, but it, th that was the whole thing is I knew who he was because I, Eric Davis had given me the notes that we're going to talk about tonight. And Oak Shannon, as you heard with uh, Project Unity, had a heart attack. And he, he had had he had died four or five times on the table. And so this is about the same time I was dealing with Eric Davis and the NIDS guys. And this was about the same time as the Wilson thing. It was about 2001, 2002. If you go back and see when did Eric Davis get laid off from NIDS, that's when I was dealing with him because he was very upset. He'd been the first guy to get laid off from NIDS. He didn't have a job. He had kids and a family and he was trying to find a job. And he eventually gets a job with the Air Force doing this gravity control thing or whatever it was with the air force you know cloaking and all this kind of stuff and uh, so that's when i talked to him it was about that time and he basically told me that oak was very sick and that he might not make it and he gave me the documents and he said if oak passes away you can put these documents on the internet and so that was my connection so i knew oak shannon was i knew that he had a very close connection with eric davis and i and i knew that this was significant this was not a fake document because who would have faked it they would have had to know about oak shannon and i just maintained nobody would know who oak shannon was they would know eric davis but not oak shannon 
So uh, you you just mentioned something. I know you mentioned it in the past, but uh, let's circle back to this. The original 28 pages of notes you got from Eric Davis. Correct. And um, if, if th- these notes are from 1985. So right. there shouldn't be, I don't think there's any classification on the notes. They're just notes. The, the co- there's not a cover page. Uh, the first page that you were referring to was the visitor passes, right, that were issued and who was going to have access uh, and, and the requirements for that, which was a top secret as- access signals uh, access uh, to uh to attend this meeting that's what that that's what that page is so the notes themselves aren't classified and if it's 20 uh, 1985 which is almost 40 years ago now their their public interest in public domain at this point right there's no restriction to releasing into the uh in into uh the public domain yeah and and to me it was I would have held these notes forever. I I leaked little bits of them, and and I've always said I had Oak Shannon's notes. I've said that numerous times. Right. Uh, but the thing was that when Oak Shannon went public, then I went, well, what am I doing holding these notes for? That's why I decided I was going to come public, and that's when Oak Shannon came to me and said, well, I'd like to see the documents before. I'm not going to stop you from releasing them, but I'd like to know what's coming. Can I see them? And I so I I gave him copies. I said that's fine. I gave him copies and uh, he came back and basically said, I don't even remember this. Like, wh- what is this thing? Uh, it doesn't like to him. The notes didn't really make any sense. And he, he didn't even remember what the thing was. And I said, well, it was this thing with John Alexander, your friend, John, and they were running this UFO thing. And I got him from Eric Davis. And then, uh, then this morning, then he sort of said he didn't know who I was, but you remember clearly that he was asked by, uh, Project Unity, do you know who Brian Cameron is? And he said, well, yeah, the name's Charlie. So he knew who I was. And and uh, that's the thing. I figured, like, I'm not a secrecy guy. I mean, I just get so annoyed by this whole deal of secrets, secrets, secrets. Everybody's got secrets. Everybody's got non-disclosure agreements. And it's like, and you you get down to it. It's like I always refer to, like, in the, in the present Congress situation. I say, they're doing all this stuff in Congress. What has the public been told? nothing absolutely not a damn thing even the 144 sightings they won't even tell you what these sightings are and that's the thing it's it's being sucked up into the black world and to me i mean i'm getting old i'm my health is not as good as it was and i i've just had tired of playing the games and so to me i figured like i'm not going to hold these notes i couldn't be dead in the next couple of years and uh, what are we holding these oak shannon notes that's when i said okay he's gone public and now i'm going to go public with these notes that i've got because i think they're very interesting when you look at them uh, they described this very interesting thing that the New York Times actually wrote a book on called Out There. And and Howard Bloom wrote a book and then it was called the UFO Working Group. And he said he had been given a source from the NSA had given it to him, which if you look in the notes is is uh, McConnell. Uh, I think his name is McConnell. Um, Hal McConnell from uh, from National Security Agency. And they wrote a whole book on this thing and they had uh, gave, people all fake names and stuff like that. And John was sort of denying that the thing existed. And I first showed the very first of that first page, I showed the top secret thing and what Mm -hmm. it was called, the Advanced Physics Theoretical Working Group. I showed it at first, this is maybe in 2003, 2004 at Eureka Springs. And I remember I put it on there and and stated that I had this. And then John suddenly started to come forward and describe the advanced physics theoretical working group. And he said they didn't, there was no notes. And then I said, well, I've got Eric, I've got uh, Oak Shannon's notes. And then uh, as I recall, John then started saying, well, nobody's supposed to have notes. And and yet you Melinda Leslie has a copy of right. uh, Ed Houck's notes. Now his which aren't I as have, extensive as these. Which I have here too as well. Yeah, but they uh they they cross oh, match. Over. oh yeah, yeah they, they match it, this is this is uh, we're going to take a break right here but i'm going to just say this as as a matter of fact we have what's going on uh with uh, the department of defense and congress and the house of representatives and what's going on over there okay what what is happening right now the research of the ufo community the Wilson Davis docs, Oak Shannon, Project Unity, your notes, Melinda Leslie, and others. 
this is a bigger bombshell than anything. We're doing better research than the House of Representatives or anybody that's giving them information or anything that's going on in the Department of Defense, uh, the Gillibrand Amendment, all of that stuff, which is cool. It pales in comparison to the efforts of the members of the UFO community, yourself, uh, Melinda Leslie, huge props, right? Huge props. And uh, the Wilson Davis document and, and how we're moving forward. And this is this is a really, really big deal, Grant. Huge, huge moment for this community. Yeah, especially if it's true that what I heard was that they are basing their investigation on the Wilson document. I mean, it's like we've given them the sort of the trail to follow the to uncover this thing. Yeah, yeah, giving them the roadmap. Yeah. And, and, and one last comment before we get to uh, the break. Um, Oak Shannon, and again, uh, the Project Unity interview was monumental. It was amazing. It was, good, <laughs> it was yeah. so good. But, but Oak's uh, recollection and the way that, uh, you know, he said, I know everybody that's in that document, talking about Wilson Davis, um, and the way that he presented it, it was, uh, it, to, to me, it had the same flavor. You know, it was identical to the presentation in Wilson and in Eric Davis notes. Yeah. And, and we have the situation where, and you know this, that Oak Shannon is sort of like, how's this going to play out? I really didn't want to be a part of this. You know, he did the interview, but he figured maybe it was the one interview. And now he's in this situation where he's sort of become the focus of this thing. And mm -hmm. he doesn't want to really be a UFO guy. He doesn't want to deal with this stuff. I think he's, uh, I liked his comment about the fan tale. Right. When he was out on, uh, you know, out on the ship in the Pacific and and, you know, he oh, was yeah. up on, and, and somebody came up, dude, we're a UFO in the back. <laughs> and, and so he goes out, you know, it was a red and blue uh, uh, flickering red and green flickering star off in the distance. Yeah. But he brought that up. And I thought it was a great point that, A, you can misunderstand things. But second, it also opens up your eyes. Yeah. And that was uh, his introduction into the world of UFOs, and and he wanted to uh, to see what was going on. So I thought that was pretty good. Excellent interview uh, with Project Unity. Let's take our break right here. Our guest tonight, the one and only Grant Cameron. At the center, once again, <laughs> it's Grant Cameron Week here on Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. More with Grant after this short break. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Stay with us. We'll be right back. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network. Your one million gigawatt paranormal powerhouse, KUNX DB, VX. Hello, Fader Knots. Jimmy Church here. You've seen me with my thunderstorm. Now you can purify the air in your home and get healthy, clean, fresh smelling air and eliminate odors just like I do right here in the bunker. The Eden Pier Thunderstorm uses Oxy technology that naturally sends out O3 molecules into the air which seek out odors and air pollutants in your home and destroys them. It's called a thunderstorm because it purifies the air just like after a thunderstorm. And right now, you can save $200 on an Eden Pier Thunderstorm 3-pack for whole home protection. With this special offer, you're getting three units for under $200. Seriously. Go to EdenPureDeals.com and use Fader 3. Shipping is free and it's easy. Just scroll down. You'll see my name right there, Jimmy Church. Click on it and get your deal today. That's EdenPureDeals.com. 
This is Billy Carson, founder and CEO of ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. ForbiddenKnowledge.tv is the fastest growing and one of the most watched networks in the world. And I would like to personally invite you to check out our expanding library of TV, film, lectures, and special presentations. ForbiddenKnowledge.tv has over 6,000 videos covering lost history, health, UFOs, spirituality, and our future. We are committed to our community. And with my personal invitation, you can right now get your own free 30-day membership at ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. TV. Your own library of information starts today at ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. Because you never got that pony you always wanted. <laughs> Damn it. Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network. Listen, I know and you know that you've always wanted your first crystal skull. Or maybe you're a collector just like me, but you just don't know where to go to find the real thing. Then I met Carolyn Ford over at EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com. Carolyn is the guardian of Einstein, one of the most respected ancient crystal skulls in the world. All of her unique skulls have been imprinted sitting with Einstein in his sacred lodge and are carved from the finest gemstone and materials. Imprinting is the process of receiving the ancient wisdom from the master skull or master computer. Einstein, the ancient crystal skull. To see Carolyn's current collection of crystal skulls, just visit her store at EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com or click on the banner over on our site. Don't forget to use the promo code JIMMY at checkout to receive 10% off of your order today. That's promo code JIMMY. Finding your first or next crystal skull is easy. Just visit EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com. Hello, I'm Katie, and you're listening to my main man, Jimmy Church, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Hi, this is Ray Sobs here, repping the planet, and you're listening to my good friend, Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. This is Toby Kebble. You're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Don't hurt me, Jimmy. I'm only little. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And this is Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. <laughs> We're of the Honey Brothers. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And I'm Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. And you're listening to Jimmy Church. The Revolution. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and you can become an official Fade or Not by just going to our membership section at jimmychurchradio.com. Hello, this is Serena Wright Taylor from Conscious Life Expo, and you're listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church, who holds the Lucky Pony record for the best astrological chart since 1963. True story. This is Micah Hanks of the Graylian Report, and you're listening to Jimmy Church on Fade to Black. <laughs> Welcome back, Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, Grant Cameron's bombshell week here on Fade to Black. Centered around, of course, oh, Grant Cameron. Um, uh, the Wilson Davis document, the Oak Shannon interview that uh, happened uh, a few days ago on Project Unity, and the notes of Oak Shannon and others, uh, which I have here tonight, and uh, we're going to go through not not everything, but a few uh, select pages and 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 jump into this because there are some specific things um, uh, that stand out uh, with these, and um, and so we're going to spend some time on s some specific talking points, uh, Grant. And uh, hats off to Melinda Leslie um, uh, for highlighting the things that that uh, my eyes were drawn to, and I think it's just confirmation from all of us uh, that there are some certain things that uh, stick out. And uh, and there's one other thing as we get into this. Um, did you notice how many times dollar signs were in these notes? Yeah, you know, well, th that's... Um, dollar signs. Yeah, I think, well, I think Melinda's uh, copy with uh, Ed Houck actually has the budget. And that's what people have to remember. The Advanced Physics Theoretical Working Group 
was actually a group that was put together by John Alexander to try to get funding from the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. So if you see in, in certain parts there, they're talking about the uh, what they need to convince people like the Blue Book book, the Blue Book said everything was garbage, whatever. Well, we need to talk about the unidentified with the Blue Book. So they're they're pl placing this thing. How do we convince people? And John has told the stories um, about and I, I will agree that John's story is actually pretty accurate. When you listen to John Alexander talk about it and you compare it to Oak Shannon's notes, He's pretty much on. He basically talks about the fact that it was it was to gain money. And he talks about going to the guy who was running Star Wars. And he was trying to get money from the guy for Star Wars. And the guy said, are you kidding me? They're already after my budget. If I do UFOs, I could lose my entire budget. And he, John just basically said nobody would, would finance the thing. And that, that's why you see all these dollar signs. And you see who they're going to. At that one point on the one page, they go. you see they go to Keyworth. Now, Keyworth was the uh, science advisor to President Reagan, and it says no. Then it says P, which is the president, no. Vice president, no. And it goes through this whole thing, and they're going, and it looks like they're asking certain people, and they're trying to get this, this funding. So it was basically, the bottom line was money. They were trying to get funding for a UFO program to investigate exactly what they're doing now in Congress. And that's why I say it's like the Bible says, there's nothing new under the sun. They just recycle this program, and it's like... Uh, you have uh, Bigelow has money. They all appear at Bigelow's place. Uh, Joe Firmage has money. They appear at Joe Firmage's place. Tom DeLong has contacts. They go to Tom DeLong. And all these people are just gravitating to these same programs. And everybody's trying to get this funding or, or they're trying to get information. And it's the same guy showing up all the time. But it basically was a was to try to get money for funding. That's what it was about. And the one thing I want to point out before we start is when you look at that page where people are signing in, what you'll see on the top of it is Department of Energy. So when you have this big scan, this big thing with Donald Trump, Donald Trump says, I can I can declassify stuff in my head. Uh, he, the president can declassify stuff just by talking about it. Jimmy Carter did it with the stealth, stealth fighter. When the stealth fighter suddenly he mentioned it, and suddenly the, the it became sort of public, and they had to start declassifying stuff. And Barack Obama did it with Area 51. He used the word Area 51, and he said, "I'm probably the first president not to uh, talk about Area 51." And that's when the name was allowed to be used. But on this one, you see Department of Energy, and the one thing that the president cannot automatically declassify is stuff out of the Department of Energy. It's run by Congress through the uh, the Atomic Energy Commission. And it has to, you, the president needs cooperation from the uh, Congress in order to classify anything in the Department of Energy. And there's always been a rumor going around in the UFO community that one of the places they may have hid the UFO thing was in the Department of Energy, because that's the one place that the executive branch couldn't get to. Now, this is uh, this is what I've just posted here. If you look at the top, it says uh, Department of Energy, as Grant just pointed out. This is a, a visitor pass uh, application that you have to fill out uh, to get into uh, onto a base or into a secured facility. Um, and but what's what's key here is the date, which is May 8th, 1985. And then if you look, it says security classification. It says top secret that anybody that is uh, that has access to this meeting or to this facility has to have top secret access. And then there's a slash and it says signals. Um, so you have to have a, a very specific uh security clearance uh, to move forward. And that's what this page is. And of course, there's a partial list of names here, but it's the date on this document that uh, to me is what is crucial. And, um, and the fact that it's top secret, because how many top secret documents can you name in the UFO committee? There are none. They're basically, and so this, this thing, this discussion on UFOs is taking place at a top secret level. Not, not uh, unclassified or secret or whatever. It's top secret. This is they're taking this very serious. And the 21 people, according to John, you needed this SCI uh, uh, addition to your top secret clearance to get into the room, even to discuss this. And here is the map of the location, <laughs> which you pointed out earlier. Um, well, you got to have a you got to have a treasure map, right? You got to know where you're before going before GPS. Yeah, yeah, before <laughs> GPS. Um, now here, I've got a clearer page of this. I'm going to pull this down, and I am going to pop this up here. 
Um, this is the same page. Uh, this is from, uh, this is Jack Houck. Uh, and so at the top of the page here, you can see uh, my pointer. That's a JH that has been marked in these pages uh, for Jack Houck. There's notes here. Pages marked JH are from Jack Houck. Um, and then uh, anything in yellow is Melinda uh, for highlights. And then all other markings are by Jack Houch, J-H. Okay, but this page uh, is the agenda, Advanced Theoretical Physics Conference agenda, again, May 8th. Now, on the handwritten notes, uh, we're going to go back and forth uh, between Oak Shannon notes and and Jack's notes. On Oak Shannon's pages, he has he has written May eighth on on several of his pages uh, for uh, for dating purposes, uh, which goes back to the original clearance uh, visitors uh, access page that I showed you. Uh, that is May eighth. This page is also from Oak Shannon's notes too, as well. All right. Okay. So here is the agenda. Now, uh, uh, the, these documents are now out on the net. You can go and look at them uh, yourself. It's a very interesting reading. But uh, when uh, when you read through this, right here, there is a, a highlight uh, by Melinda. But this just stands out, and this is a recurring theme. Uh, from this meeting, which is research and development programs needed. And I will add, uh, you know, from recovered uh, UFO crafts and technology. Grant? Yep. Yep. I, I agree. Yeah. It's, it's, it, that's the whole deal is um, it, it, in the United States, there was, we had a, I don't know if you know that uh, Nicole and I were involved in some negotiations between the Americans and the Canadians on, on disclosure. And um, the Canadians want to make an effort and we really can't get into details, but we were dealing with uh, Americans to come in and help with this, uh, give some information to a bunch of MPs and the American um uh, conclusion was that this is research and development. It's a possible threat. It's being run through the um, Armed Services Committee and the Intelligence Committee. Whereas in Canada, it was, the Canadians made it very clear they want a scientific investigation. So here again, you see the the sort of the military aspect to it: research and development, where you're going to develop uh, new uh, you know technology and weapons and this sort of thing. Whereas in Canada, they just wanted it to be a straight scientific program. And uh, so now if we go down, uh, I just jumped ahead to this R&D comment here. Uh, we have the, the introduction, agenda, objectives, purpose, introduce attendees and describe bona fides. I thought that was, uh, all yeah. of this is interesting. Objectives, explore evidence presented. Uh, B, if evidence is sufficient, is there sufficient evidence to support an R&D research and development program? If evidence is sufficient, what would the tr thrust be? Uh, develop an action plan. And we're going to get back to that later because the action plan uh, was pretty interesting. And I'm going to get to the notes later. But it's specifically, Grant, let me ask you uh, this really quick. There's there's a comment um, at, the, at the end of the meeting uh, that was part of the action plan that said, if uh, I'm paraphrasing, if the UFO phenomenon uh, is leaked, we need to have a media plan in advance. Right. It was like, wait, 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 what, 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 what? And when when you saw that comment, what what did you make of that? I don't even remember that. We'll have to discuss it when you, okay. when you, well, when you go uh, through it. I mean, that, that's pretty interesting if they do. I mean, because that was one of the things, if you, if you remember McConnell, uh, uh, McCaslin, the, Tom DeLong's guy, the, the guy at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, that was one of the things that he provided was this uh, explanation of what to do when disclosure actually takes place. So that's always going to be a consideration. And if you remember the Paul Hellyer story, Paul Hellyer was given information by the um the head of emergency management in canada and was told was told that he was briefed on it and the head of emergency management would be the guy that would be briefed because if something happens then you know so the stock market melts down or whatever happens you need a program to do 
uh, something if disclosure does take place. So I'm pretty sure that they have programs for possible disclosure of an alien race, and they have plans in in air that are ready to go. Here it is, right here. Action. Uh, initiate and selected source uh, procurements. Uh, point number two: plan a media yeah. release now if cover is blown later. Although this may refer to, um, if you read Jacques Vallée's uh, book number three, uh, Forbidden Science, he talks about this. And uh, this may refer to the fact that their cover is blown, that this was this top secret thing. And it started to leak right away. This whole idea through Bloom, the New York Times picked it up. And Jacques Vallée had told, uh, no, Hal Putoff had told Jacques Vallée about the fact that because this story was leaking about the Advanced Physics Theoretical Working Group, this proved you can't keep a UFO secret. It was It's actually in Jacques Vallée's book. So it may be their cover, not the UFO cover, but it may be what do you do if this this cover that of them working on UFOs breaks? Because the, the idea was that nobody's working on UFOs. And here are these, here are these top secret guys are all gathering together to try to get funding for UFOs. So I think that may apply to the fact that if their cover is blown, what are they going to do? And their cover did get blown. And uh, and and I'm going to, uh, we're going to circle back to that because I think that's a very important point. And also, um, we can discuss this in a bit, Hal Putoff was there at this meeting and uh, he does a presentation and there was this whole, uh, they kept calling it Psy, right? Uh, uh, you know, the mind. Yeah. And uh, and remote viewing and that aspect of it, which was interesting. And then Hal, on the second day, did a recap of his presentation of the day before. Um, I, I found that part extremely compelling. What did you think? Well, the thing I point out about that is people people don't really I what I I've been in this so long. What I realized that people make a mistake is they always think that what's happening today in UFOs happened back then. What you got to realize with this is remote viewing was not known by the American populace till 19 19- 95 when it was declassified by the CIA when they came and said we did a study it doesn't work we're shutting the program down that was 1995 that was 10 years before Hal put off is giving a briefing on remote viewing to these guys and he's using the word remote viewing that would not become public until 10 years later so I found that fairly significant was it and it's exactly what they're putting out now about the remote viewing and how important it was and the, the side component uh, at one point, they even talk about um, um, the the one they're talking about talking to experiencers. And I've got a book coming out called the the UFO Sky Pilots, where I've got three dozen people who have flown the craft and what they've said and how how it's done, and, and they're all saying the same thing. But what a lot of these people also describe is the fact that when you see the craft, you go up to the craft and it's, 20, it's thirty feet across, and you go inside and it's the size of a football stadium on the inside, and then they mm-hmm. look outside again and it's thirty feet across, and they look inside and Hal put off actually mentioned that, and in this document they actually talk about this. Uh, they they talk about this. It got bigger or she got smaller. The same right. thing. This idea that when you go inside the UFO craft, they can make it as big as they want inside the craft. And they have this, this side component that it's all made out of consciousness. And they're able to change things instantly. So you have Hal coming in and giving this, this briefing. I remember when, it, when I first got the notes. The first time I showed the notes was at this Eureka Springs. So I, I put this top secret thing. And then I quickly put the 20 names on a slide, which lasted for about a second and a half. And it just went like, bye. And then uh, after the meeting, uh, you remember Tim Good from Great Britain sold the of biggest course. UFO book of all times. He comes and he says, Grant, he says, uh, I saw those names on the slide. He said, uh, do you think I could get the names? I said, yeah, I'll give you the names. So I gave him all the names except for Oak Shannon. I gave him all the names. And then I got a, an email from, from Hell Put Off. And Hell Put Off is very short. He doesn't really uh, email people. I got an email from Hell Put Off. He said, Oh, I understand you've got a list a list of names of a group that I supposedly was part of. And I said, yes, I do. And he said, could I have the names? And I said, yeah, sure. So I gave him the names. I never heard anything more. But uh, yeah, Hal was a part. That's the thing. A lot of these these guys were part. John Alexander, Hal put off. It's the same sort of crowd that cycles in and out of these groups. Now, this is, uh, if there's any question about the subject of this meeting Let's go to this page right here. And I just, uh, this is just interesting. A bunch of 
We're, we're talking about Lockheed Martin, McDonnell uh, Douglas, um, uh, the three-letter agencies, the Department of Defense, uh, physicists, right? And here it is. <laughs> Check out this page. They discuss, these are the bullet points, biblical UFO history, yeah. the San Francisco flap of 1897, and you can see there's, there's notes off to the side here. And these uh, are hoax notes, right? Uh, what's yeah, that? These are yeah, these are these are uh, Jack's notes. Jack 1947, Hunt. Kenneth Arnold, uh, Air Force investigations initiated. Right, 1947, Project Blue Book. Um, uh, Ten thousand reports, six hundred unexplained as of 1965. Remember, everybody, this meeting took place in 1985. Think about that uh, for historical context, because they talk about the Condon investigation. They talk about the congressional hearing that happened after Condon, uh, which was back in the sixties, uh, late sixties and current sightings rank of 10 to 100 per week. And then classic and typical sightings. Now they discuss Socorro, 1964, Michigan, Gerald Ford, right? Uh, 1966, which initiated Condon and the uh, the last, uh, well, <laughs> it wasn't the last because we just had hearings, but the hearings that happened in the late 1960s. Uh, Washington in 1952, uh, over the Capitol, uh, the Mantell, uh, Lubbock Lights, Guild, and then Itaipu, De Virgis, and uh, Via Boas are all part of their uh, conversation that day. Classified history, overhead correlations, um, uh, comment from a ship, okay? Uh, 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 five base locations, and we're going to circle back to that too yeah, as yeah. well. Isn't they named that them. Yeah, they named them. Yeah. They, they named them. A correlation with unclassified literature and expectations and data consistent. Let's go back to the five base locations, Grant. Um, this is pretty extraordinary, and it's certainly for 1985. And this is uh, a top secret meeting about uh, uh, UFO and ET technology. Uh, what's up with these five base locations? Well, the one thing I noticed on that is at the top of the page, if you look at the Oak Shannon notes, it's Ed Dames' name is there. And that may have been what it may have been, a briefing that was given by Ed Dames, that Ed Dames was putting this. So it came to this mountain, the Hayes, is it the Hayes Mountain in uh, Alaska, uh, Paradido in Spain. Um, they, they, uh, those are the two that I remember. And they, but they do name these, these uh names but they don't say they're ufo bases but everybody in the ufo community knows that's that's what these things were this is the rumor that they had the UA alien bases there so uh it's brought up in this meeting now whether they take it seriously or not i'm i'm, I'm really not too sure i mean i i just know that ed dame's name is on the top of that that page and then we we come to this page uh where they discuss security um and inside of the ufo community we have uh, talked about compartmentalized uh yeah. segments of 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 all uh security and military departments in in the united states government uh, that everything is compartmentalized on a need to know basis and you know what you know is not what the person next to you knows and what they know you don't know Right. And that's called compartmentalized. It's segmented. Um, uh, it's like separated by rooms and drawers. But I'm talking about the human brain. And, uh, and, uh, can I make a comment? Because I, th I think that was one of the things that I noticed from the notes was like the Ed Dames didn't seem to be part of the meeting. It is almost like they brought him in for one day to give a, a, a briefing. So he would be on a need to know. He would come in for the one day. He would just give his thing. He doesn't know what these guys are doing. He gives his briefing and then he leaves. And he doesn't even know these guys are working on top secret UFO material. He just is told to give his briefing and, and leave. That's it. That's called uh, compartmented. Um, and so they want to uh, develop a security uh, situation uh, with the UFO subject in general and dealing with the public. And they say, it's, well, it should be compartmented, yep. should include all source data, should handle unclassified interactions. Very interesting comment. And then it's this last bullet point, <laughs> should be totally legal. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's good. That was a good, that's a good yeah. line. <laughs> and uh, now I want to, I'm going to jump down to uh, the the possible goals page. And then uh, we'll get over to Oak Shannon's notes um, uh, here after the break. 
But uh, this is where, I mean, to me, uh, uh, I always picture people sitting around in a dark room, you know, discussing, you know, the crazy stuff. Well, here you go. Possible goals. Create a peaceful earth. Prevent war. Preserve societal history. Establish communication, right, with E.T. Obtain assistance. Establish existence. Breakthrough to 22nd century science. And then here we go. Obtain technology spinoffs, non-lethal weapons, biological controls of processes, new materials, architectural, uh, 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 agricultural productivity jump, wide band stealth. And then uh, the three big points here, develop a gravity interaction system, discover high tech, reliable, paranormal performance. And then parry the Soviet threat. Now, what goes through your mind here? The absence of the alien threat, which I noticed in the notes. There, there's no, this is a potential threat. They're shutting down. There's no discussion in that I know in the Oak Shannon notes of shutting down nuclear missiles. It says shutting down guns. Some some reference to guns. It's shooting, shutting down guns. But what you see here is almost like a, a scientific thing. You have John Alexander's non-lethal weapons, which was big on the new materials. Is the pieces you know trying to get what they're doing now with the with the pieces to back engineer that to get processes. But I see the lack of the 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 threat of the alien thing. That this is a, a national security threat. You really don't see that in any of these documents. It's more the fact that we can get technological spinoffs and we can increase the, the the productivity and the the peace in the world and all this kind of stuff. It's a different sort of spin than what they're putting on it now. And yet, John, I think at one point did say that they used the threat thing in 1985 because you need that to sell the, the program. Unless there's a threat, unless there's a need, uh, no nobody cares. You got to scale the living daylights out of everybody. But I noticed the lack of that in these documents. They're, they they really don't talk about reptilians and they're going to eat us and uh, all all the stuff that you hear now. And it's a potential threat, and we've got to deal with that national security. You don't see that in the in these in these documents. Yeah, and uh, you know, create a peaceful earth, right? And then we have advantage to the United States, uh, maximum payoff to mankind, earliest successful milestone. And minimum risk of disastrous failure. Just interesting. For something that's supposed to be about physics, right, uh, this this, uh, two-day meeting was certainly centered on ET contact, uh, research and development, uh, the weaponization of that technology, bringing the technology into the uh, into uh, uh, manufacturing uh, uh, for the masses. Very very interesting and direct. Just the last thing before you go to the break is 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 uh, something that's always puzzled me. We've always seen these notes from '85, like Hauk's notes and and uh, Shannon's notes agree. But John, if you hear John lecture, he describes the fact that it went on from '84 to '89. And I don't really know what they were doing in that period of time. I only know about this 85 thing. But John seems to indicate it went on for a lot longer than just these couple of days that, that these meetings took place. Yeah. And so, uh, man, I got to get to a break. So here's the teaser before the break. Uh, they went from create a peaceful earth to this. Consolidate existing data to establish threat. Yeah. UFO database, classified database, abduction database, collect new data, install sensors, overflights, define several credible scenarios. Dev- that's a very interesting line right there. Develop new physics theory, obtain direct contact. Holy crap, right? Yeah. Physical. And uh, the psi reference is 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 right there very interesting let's take our break our guest tonight the one and only grant cameron who has once again found himself at the center of bombshell week here on fade to black we'll be right back after this short break everybody stay right there this is fade to black i'm your host jimmy church huge week on fade to black tonight grant cameron tomorrow night i am going to take everybody on a two and a half hour walkthrough of the Wilson Davis documents. Wednesday night, Richard Dolan is here. 
This is Fade to Black on the Game Changer and Unex Networks. We'll be right back after this short break. Stay with us. Way out here, we listen to Jimmy Church. You're listening to Fade to Black. You're listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the X. ¿Qué tal mis amigos? Yo soy Mario Carson, el tiburón, y los invito para que escuchen a mi buen amigo Jimmy Church Radio. ¡Claro que sí! The Believer is the chilling true story of Dr. John Mack a renowned Harvard psychiatrist and Pulitzer Prize winner. This is an outreach program from the cosmos to the consciously impaired. He risked it all to investigate human encounters with aliens, the believer, alien encounters, hard science, and the passion of John Mack. Written by award-winning former New York Times journalist and author Ralph Blumenthal. Now available in paperback from High Road Books. Introducing the Game Changer Blend from River Moon Coffee that delivers a customized blend made specifically for the Fader Knots. If the game is rigged, change the game. It's a bolder cup with some bite. Game Changer is the coffee of choice for those that prefer an organic dark roast that is slightly lighter and milder, but it's still dark. With wild notes of pecans and chocolate with a rich, balanced, full-bodied cup that is roasted to perfection for a great coffee to start your day. As an after-dinner coffee or anywhere in between. Artisan, small batch, roasted to perfection. USDA certified organic, all River Moon coffee is freshly roasted and packaged in the USA. Just go to rivermooncoffee.com or click on the banners over on our site and use the promo code F2B Blend for 15% off of your order today. Rivermooncoffee.com. Do you want to be an official fade or not? Of course you do. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black. Just go to our membership section at jimmychurchradio.com. Fader Knots, when you think about the future of our country and where we're headed, do you wonder about the food supply? I do. Disruptions in the food supply chain could be disastrous, and they usually occur with little warning. That's why the smartest thing you can do today is to stockpile emergency food, water, and other essentials. I personally recommend My Patriot Supply. They're the nation's largest emergency preparedness company, serving millions of customers for more than a decade. In fact, they're the only source my family trusts for our preparedness plan. You should too. Right now, save 20% off a full four-week supply of delicious meals that provide 2,000 calories a day. Saving 20% helps too, doesn't it? Especially now. So go to preparewithjimmy.com and get ready. That's preparewithjimmy.com. There's no time to lose. Do it now. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. You listen to us, and we listen to you. And so does the CIA. (laughs) Hi, I'm Ray Sobs, and I'm here to tell you about something I really think you're going to like. The Unex Network is a part of a larger group called Unex Media, and one of the things we offer is the quarterly Unex Magazine, which is available both in print and digital formats. This amazing magazine covers all aspects of the unexplained, and makes for a great coffee table periodical that is certain to spark enlightening conversations in your living rooms. We invite you to check out the latest digital issue for free. Just go to unxnetwork.com forward slash membership and fill out your free membership with your name and email and become a new free member. The new summer issue is now available and the theme is Time Anomalies, which includes a feature article written by our managing editor, Lee Spiegel. Just go to unxnetwork.com 
unxnetwork.com forward slash memberships. That's unxnetwork.com forward slash memberships and get your free e-copy of the Unex magazine today. You are listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Oi, oi, I'm Reese Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is Revolution. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution is on radio. Ciao. Welcome back, Fade to Black. It's Bomb Show Week here. Wilson Davis, Grant Cameron, Oak Shannon. Oak Shannon uh, uh, went public uh, in an interview a few days ago on Project Unity. Uh, his name was mentioned in the Wilson Davis documents and uh, uh, that uh, Grant Cameron found himself at the center of a few years ago. And the UFO community uh, has since then uh, taken charge uh, with this, independent of what, what's going on in the Department of Defense and Capitol Hill. Uh, the community is, is, is getting it done, independent of anything else. And this is, this is a huge week. And, and hats off uh, uh, to everybody involved and uh, Melinda Leslie who is, is just absolutely wonderful. When, whenever I hang out with Melinda, and she's, I, I know she's listening right now, and she looks at you and starts to make a point, and you're going eyeball to eyeball, you take her serious. <laughs> you take Melinda serious. And, uh, and, and, and I just love her to death. Okay, so anyway, um, uh, in a minute here, we're going to get to uh, the Oak Shanna notes. Uh, I wanted to go through these notes uh, first, because they correlate and they cross-reference uh, back and forth. Oh, Melinda just called me. Melinda, I'm on the air. Seriously. <laughs> yeah, Seriously, it just popped up. She's missed, getting it done. Missed, missed call. Oh, look. Should I call her? Should there I? you go. There you oh, go. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> I just, uh, did you just hear my little message? Uh, uh, Melinda, I'm live on the air with Grant Cameron. What, what you got are. to say? Well, you know, I'm in the middle of the show and we're talking about you. Can you stay out of the action for just a few minutes? I just sent you a funny message. That's all. Are we on the air right now? We are on the air right now. You are live. Say hi to everybody. everybody. There you go. Melinda, I'll call you after the show. Good job. Okay. All right, man. Bye. Uh, Bye. (laughs) What's going on? There's only one Melinda Leslie. There's only one. She's the best. Um, is, can I make uh, a comment? Let me make. I can. I make a comment. I during the break, uh, Nicole Sackage, my assistant, sent me the actual reference from Jacques Vallée's book. I think it's actually very interesting to read to describe what happened here. Um, and I knew this before. Uh, it used. It was called the Secret Onion Project. I don't know if you know that. That's so, right. That's right. Yeah. So, so Hal, this is Jacques Vallée talking. Hal tells me that the Secret Onion Project is dead. This is. November the 28th of 1986 tells me that the secret onion project is dead. After all those high level meetings, someone who was higher up threw a monkey wrench into the gears. I believe we, they became visible prematurely. And that's what I was talking about before. I was leaking already and they blamed Jack Hauk for it. The episode with Jack Hauk was demonstrated that they are incapable of maintaining confidentiality. And Hauk was telling various people about the fact that this meeting was going on. And because it became exposed, it's the same story that you hear with Danny Sheehan and and with Lou Elizondo, is that the higher-ups throw the monkey wrench in there to shut the thing down. They hear this project's going on, and that's why they wanted to keep it so confidential, but protect themselves not only from the public, but from the higher-ups who are going to shut the program down. And that's what this seemed to describe that they shut the program down. Yeah. And, and, and Jack Houck's notes, uh, back to your point, let me bring this up. 
He says, selection criteria, a good plan will satisfy prime goal and several others, maximize success probability, have airtight security. Right, right. You, yeah, you always hear this story. I don't know if it's true, but there's always a story that they spend. Well, Richard Doty's listening. He may be able to comment, but they spend more money on security than they do on the program. That's one of the stories that I hear. And uh, now uh, I just want to get uh, to this uh, really quick. Um, this is evaluation procedure, uh, evaluation data. And uh, let's scroll through this really quick. Uh, because it's ranked uh, over here, it says rank, and then one, three, five. Number one, detector deployment uh, to detect uh, these craft. That's the number one priority. Overflights is the number three priority. UFO database is number five. Number four, classified data is listed as number four as a procedure. Um, abductee data. Very interesting. Uh, and that's listed as number eight. Uh, 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 let me let me go down here. There it is. Number two, yeah. Psy contact. And, wow. and that's what you that's what you see is the importance because you have you have Hal put off who is re remote viewing. You have John Alexander who is doing the 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 programs with the goat and all that kind of stuff. And you have uh, a Hauk and all these guys that are bending spoons and stuff. And in the in the <laughs> Shannon notes, they describe the fact that the Russians are ahead of us in the side thing, and the the is that the Israelis are telling us that the the. Russians are ahead of us, but the Israelis are ahead of the Russians. And it's this whole thing about Psy, this, this race to get the Psy component to this whole thing. And so now we have proposed scope and then uh, column one task and good result on this side. Deploy detectors and monitor. Uh, number two, overfly, tie correlation with... Um, uh, I, 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 Other I, observables. I, I, observables. Um, uh, assess classified data, scope and quality. Uh, number four, go for psi remote viewing contact. Whew, man, absolutely crazy. So, um, and then next is a breakdown of the schedule and the program plan. And then I'm going to, uh, this is interesting and everybody can go look at the document uh, yourself and uh, it's out there on the net. But uh, this is what Grant referred to at the beginning of the program is we have a cost breakdown of this. Uh, Grant, take us through this. Yeah, well, well, this is the the deployment that, that you had that as number one. So that's the major, and that's what they're doing again with with what's going on now with the Nimitz. That's why the Nimitz was so important because you had not only ob observables by pilots, but you had all this equipment picking it up. So this is the idea of, of in, in order to sell it scientifically, you need measurement. So you need uh, non-subjective uh, elements that detect it and and measure it and stuff like that that's what they're mainly doing because in order to sell it you you'll need this data to prove that it's not just people imagining things that you actually have radar and you have all these other different components so that was the major thing that they want um the the classified stuff i'm not really too sure the the high tech stuff again it was this idea that they wanted to monitor and it comes down to this whole idea that i got from the 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 um um, documents as well that John Alexander has described is the final conclusion was yes UFOs exist exactly what the government's saying now UFOs exist and we haven't got the clue what's going on we're, we're still trying to do detectors we're still trying to prove that UFOs exist and so that's what this is all about is trying to get the proof with the data and 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 so that they can convince high level people to give them the 1.2 million dollars which I guess was a lot of money at that time uh, to run this program to investigate UFOs, but you needed uh, this detector equipment in order to prove it scientifically because the word of mouth really didn't work in Blue Book where they went to Blue Book and they said, well, we've got to talk about the un unsolved uh, cases and stuff like that. And we've got, to, we've got to try to sell this thing to whoever they were trying to sell it to. And John talked about the fact that they basically were not able to sell it.
The uh, uh, the documents for everybody. Uh, I'm, I'm watching this uh, conversation going down in in the live chat. Documents are available all over Twitter, all over Facebook, all over social media. You can go and and get the download links. It's been happening all day long. Um, uh, the documents are now widely distributed. Um, I'm not showing them for the first time. Uh, they have been. Uh, out there all day long, and uh, everybody is talking about about their specific points and and what they find interesting. Um, now, when we get to, um, I'm I'm bringing this up here. I also have uh, this is Oak Shannon's notes. Um, uh, I I'm going to pull them up separately here so I can look at them blown up and so I can see uh, what the heck I'm looking at. So let me pull these up. This is uh, page two, or no, page three, page four. Okay, uh, this is the review of Hal Putoff's uh, presentation, and uh, uh, we've been talking about this already. But let's go through this because uh, there's a comment in here which is uh, uh, right under number one. Um, it goes A and B. Uh, this 150,000 uh, magnetic field number. Uh, let's let's talk about that for a second, can we? Yeah, I sent that to Jimmy Blanchett to ask him whether that number means anything to him. Uh, somebody else was talking about this 150,000. I'm pretty sure it was Jimmy Blanchett was talking about uh, this number. And this is the, the idea that you have this magnetic field that you're getting measurements, you're getting scientific measurements. It's not just, you know, targets. Are you close? Are you not close? This sort of stuff that they, it indicated. And again, we got to go back to the fact that this was remote viewing 10 years before it was actually declassified in 1985. You could say to people remote viewing, they wouldn't have a clue what you're talking about. This was sort of advanced and hell is talking about. I remember talking to hell about, did you brief, brief the president? And he basically indicated that up till 1988, when he left the program, the president and the vice president were being briefed on remote viewing. So um, this was going right up to the top. But uh, the number surprised me because I never heard really any numbers of magnetic fields being associated. And I know they were doing that with the Laurentian University. They were using magnetic fields to uh, around people's heads. And they were doing this thing with the the Schumann's resonance and, and the, the target was on like Ingo Swan. When they blocked the Schumann's resonance, Ingo Swan couldn't hit a target. When, when they had the, the Schumann's resonance on, Ingo would be on target and stuff like that. So as, when I saw the number, I was kind of impressed that, that they actually had some sort of measurement of something. They did. And um, now these are these are handwritten notes, everybody. So uh, as this presentation is going on, Oak Shannon is writing this down. Um, so the exactness of it may not be what we need here, but it, what he says is 150,000 and it says AML, uh, AML or AMI turns magnetic field seems to be associated with UFO sightings. Very interesting. And it's a very direct number. And then and somebody else brings this up. I, I can't remember who it is, but there is somebody else who's making the same claim and it's got nothing to do with this. It's just recently. OK, I got you. I got you. I got you. Uh, the next part uh, is remote viewing. Um, and again, it, 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 uh, we, we started to talk about this. Uh, I heard you mention this earlier today. Uh, indication that info is subliminal flash phenomenon, 20% signal, 80% noise. Yeah. Fill in from imagination. Uh, you mentioned this er earlier. Can you can you expand on that? Well, this this I've talked about is is my 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 idea, like I wrote a book called um, Contact Modalities, and the idea that I have is similar is the idea that what you're trying to do is is everybody can access the field, the psychic field. The reason you can't access the field is because your left brain, the little ego was talking in your head and there's got all this noise. And the idea of whether it's hypnosis or uh, whether it's meditation or whether it's psychedelics or whatever is to shut the left brain down. When you shut the left brain down, you shut off the noise and th that gives you the signal. You can pick up the signal. And I remember when I made that discovery, I said, oh, my God. And I went to hell. Put off. I said, hell, have you, did you do this left brain, right brain thing? And he said read chapter six of my book and I go chapter six of their book on the mind on, on, and, and it's all about the right brain, left brain, this whole idea that, uh, 
the the uh, the the female brain, the the right brain is one that's accessing the field, and the left brain is the one that's causing all the noise. So that's just eighty percent noise. And the idea of all these protocols of trying to access the field, whether it's psychic or mediums or whatever it is, is the same idea. It's trying to reduce that noise factor so you can pick up the signal. Everybody can pick up the signal. It's just the noise is getting in the way. This is the next page, uh, which it, 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 it it's at the top. It says Wednesday, review of Tuesday, um, intro, objective, known evidence. And then it's listed, uh, the cases here, Cash Landrum. Uh, they have Iran listed here, you know, the, yep. the, yep. the, the crazy yep. four phantom. Yep. yep. But they, um, what I thought was interesting here is Rendlesham uh, yep. listed uh, right there. Um, and also down at the bottom, uh, I want to uh, go back to Woodbridge uh, specifically, uh, because at that time, this wasn't uh, a big, uh, it wasn't what it is today in, yeah, in right. pop culture. This is 1985, uh, you know, four years after uh, Rendlesham, and here they are talking about it in, in very specific detail. Well, there is, there is a, an idea that there's people making claims that John Alexander was involved with, uh, that he was part of the briefings or he was involved with, with Rendlesham. What I think is important here is what they're trying to do again is they're trying not to, to deal with the uh, UFOs don't exist, it's all subjective, whatever. They're trying to find the best cases they can possibly grab pull them out of all the noise of all the bad cases and sell it to the government. So they're looking at Cash Landrum as a, as a very concrete case. The Iran thing had measurements. The Woodbridge thing had, you know, ground traces and, and high level witnesses and stuff. And then you have this thing, I think later on, this, this Neary photographs where he talks about these photographs that were taken. And that's, so they're looking for this high quality evidence that, that they, they want to present to uh, build their case. Um, and it, it goes on, uh, Mike Neely photos. Yeah, that's discussed later on in the notes. I can't remember what it is, but they actually do that. But there's an important thing that comes here. Bob, uh, uh, I've, all, I've got a lot of documents that I haven't released yet, and I've got a lot of documents I have released. And one of them has to do with the next one is Bob Wood was there. And if you, you probably interviewed Bob Wood and Ryan Wood, they were leaked. 3,700 pages of the New Majestic 12 documents. These documents were coming to them. There was book uh, stuff uh, and all this kind of stuff. And Bob Wood, uh, some of his documents leaked to me. And then what happened was Bob Wood ran a program. People may not know. Uh, uh, McDonnell Douglas ran a program in 1968 on UFOs. They were given a half a million dollars. Bob Wood ran the program. Uh, uh, James Douglas, I think, was uh, interested. And he said, I I'll give you half a million dollars. You figure out what's going on. And so they had this whole team, exactly what John Alexander was doing in 1985. They did with McDonnell Douglas in 67. And they, they had, the, you know, getting in investigations, cases and stuff. And they were interviewing people who were abductees and what they were doing is they were doing regressions of these people who were abductees and they would regress them and say did the aliens tell you uh how the craft works and they were trying to figure out how the craft worked because it was the idea they said either we get it or boeing's going to get it and they sold this program so they did it and what happened the guy that did the regressions actually had a set of notes the same as oak shannon had a set of notes and Hauk had a set of notes he had this set of notes and he he was keeping them in the barn of his of his uh, uh, farm, and he dies. And then the next guy that comes along buys the the farm, and he sees these notes in the barn, and he goes, "Oh my God! I can get piles of money." He puts them on eBay, and they sell for twenty nine dollars. The guy that buys them comes to me, and 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 I look at him, and I get him a, a, a website. Uh, uh, check the evidence in dot com in Great Britain to put the in the UK, yes, in the UK, and they put them up. And Bob Wood comes to me; he's absolutely furious. How do you get these documents? And I told him the story about the guy selling them. He said, "Oh, okay." So the, these documents—that's what happens. People keep these documents secret. When they die, the documents sort of float out, and people like me grab onto them. And this is how these 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 things get out. But there's a lot of stuff that people really don't know. There's a lot of UFO studies that took place that nobody really knows. There was one I was given documents of, and I've, I've talked about it a bit, from Lyndon Johnson. I was given a manuscript that was written on a book on the guy that set up the UFO program for Lyndon Johnson and the whole thing about who was on the program and how they ran it and all this kind of stuff. And it came to the same conclusion as here. UFOs absolutely exist, and we haven't got a clue. Beyond that, we have no idea what's going on.
There's uh, so Bob Wood is listed here uh, for presenting reports. Uh, McDonald Douglas uh, and his study that you just referenced. Uh, Don Kay uh, did a report, uh, presented a report on ET, and then Hal Putoff is listed here for uh, um, uh, remote viewing. And then down at the bottom of the page, you see an asterisk that says Hal Putoff recapped his presentation for Joe uh, uh, Brydock. Um, and then we go to the next. Can I make a comment on this? Go back yes. in, again. I want to make a comment on this because yeah, flip back to the last page because I lost my train of thought here. Right okay. Here. Um, the, I looked up this Don K and who he was because if you take a look at the names, he's either there's two different guys. There's there's uh, Don Keir. And the thing was that was interesting to me is you have a top secret meeting. And guys are giving briefings, and this Don K guy is giving a briefing on ETs. And it's like, well, what do they know about ETs? It's like, you know, this is 1985. So he's either Don K E R R or he's uh, K E U B L E R. And the one guy is actually the, he's still now, he's now the director of news and intelligence for the National Geographic in, in, uh, International Agency. And I recall Tom DeLong mentioning that agency, that that's where they were hiding the UFO thing. And so some of these guys were high-level guys uh, that were uh, deputy director of uh, national intelligence, the, these Don K guys. And I don't know which guy it was, but uh, I went to uh, back, and a lot of people do this in information, the same as they did with the Wilson document, where they started to look at all the names. There's a lot of names in here that have never been put out before in terms of UFO. And people are going to look these people up and start to put the, the, the dots together and connect the dots. There, there's a lot of new names in these in these documents as to people that, that we never knew were associated with the UFO phenomena. And you got to remember, this is happening at a top secret SCI level. The next page, uh, I'm going to get uh, uh, to this before we get to the break. Uh, thoughts on Wednesday's process. Uh, where do we want to be? action items, how do we proceed? And then John, I'm assuming that's John Alexander, yes. no source other than uh, personal experiences. 50% believe there is something begging to be studied. And that is from John Alexander. Um, comment on that page with a John's uh, statement. Well, that's what John has always maintained. That nobody's disputing the fact that there isn't something to investigate. But what he's saying is that when he went up to the chain of command, nobody was interested. Nobody wanted to deal with it. And it is it is to be investigated. And they really don't know. And uh, that you should put it out. But the thing is to convince the people at the top to spend the money. Because most people are working on when things fall apart. When the bridge falls down, then they do something. But no, if you go and say, well, we should do some uh, advanced stuff to stop bridges from falling down. They're really not interested because the, they work backwards. They, they wait for the event to happen in, in in Parliament and before they'll do anything. Let's take our break right here. We're going to continue with Oak Shannon's notes. This is Bombshell Week here on Fade to Black. Our guest tonight, Grant Cameron. Once again, Grant at the center of all of it. A lot of hard work going on. And of course, I want to thank Melinda Leslie as well. This is Fade to Black. I'm your Jimmy Church. We'll be right back. Hi, everybody. This is Rob Halford, the Mental Guard, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Your one million gigawatt paranormal powerhouse, KUNX DB, VX. The Believer is the chilling true story of Dr. John Mack, a renowned Harvard psychiatrist and Pulitzer Prize winner. This is an outreach program from the cosmos to the consciously impaired. He risked it all to investigate human encounters with aliens, the believer, alien encounters, hard science, and the passion of John Mack. Written by award-winning former New York Times journalist and author Ralph Blumenthal. Now available in paperback from High Road Books. Are you ready to read about true paranormal events? Unex Media publishes nonfiction books about UFOs, ghosts and haunted places, time anomalies, cryptid creatures, and more. Just like KUNXDB Radio, it's all about unexplained phenomena. 
Visit www.unxmedia.com to see our list of great book titles by Debbie Ziegelmeyer, Gene Walker, Devin Listrom, Wayne Lawrence, Bill Spicer, and yours truly, Margie Kay. That's unxmedia.com. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and I only drink Fade to Black blend coffee from River Moon. Just click on the River Moon Coffee banner at jimmychurchradio.com. Promo code F2B Blend. This is the only way forward. This is Fade to Black. Make contact. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of Fade to Black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the Fade to Black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of Fade to Black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied, dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2B Blend for 15% off of your order today. You want to know a secret? I love ponies. I really love ponies. I'm serious. I couldn't stay sane without ponies to brush. Why fade to black? Because you never got that pony, damn it! This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm going to see you church tonight. Grant Cameron, it's bombshell week here on Fade to Black. Huge, huge development. Something in my throat. You know, the only thing that fixes that for me, Grant? What's that? Oh, there you go. <laughs> River Moon Coffee. There you go. <laughs> I'm good to go now. Yeah, I'm, re- I'm reading through these notes uh, during the break. It's just like... It's the best, right? It's the best. Um, it's Don Kemble, K E M B L E. And if you go down uh, further into the notes, which is here, uh, this is Oak Shannon's Don Kemble page. Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Hypothesis ET. Now let's go through. This is, this is extraordinary. And now to put all of this in context for everybody, this is a top secret meeting uh, uh, that is going down uh, May 8th uh, and 9th, 1985, uh, with members of different agencies, the Department of Defense, physicists um, and and scientists, uh, all looking into ET contact, uh, crash retrieval technology, research and development, and and what should be done with all of this. And this is uh, Don Kemble's page, Hypothesis ET. And I'm going to go through uh, a couple of these points that are here. Um, it says, uh, given modest, uh, civil, uh, modest number uh, of c- uh, civilizations, one will colonize galaxy. Um, very interesting point. Number two. Why one? Okay, we're going to stop right here on this point. It's extraordinary. One way trips, most likely first step. What? <laughs> right? Wait, wait, wait. What? What's what's Don talking about here? Yeah. Well, I think that's the same as uh, I always make the joke about Mars, where people always say, oh, "I'd like to go to Mars." I said, "I live in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada." I said. I know what it's like at 35 below. You, you, you're talking, you've never been in 35 below. You get to Mars, the suicide rate will be like 100%. It's a one-way trip because you're not coming back. They speak a billion dollars per person to get you there. And I think that's this idea that once you leave, you ain't coming back. You're, you know, 
we, even now to go to Mars, it's a one-way trip. And he says a uh, fuel replacement and destination likely. Number four, no fundamental new physics required to permit interstellar flight, uh, e.g. Uh, uh, fusion, yeah. That's, yeah. that's Stanton Friedman's big argument. Right. You, you, you don't need new physics. Um, uh, uh, lifetime of ET, multi-generation travel, um, uh, suspended animation, staging stations, um, and the, uh, moving down here would expect active signal interaction to precede, not proceed to precede travel. Um, so they're talking about contact with ET, right? Communication with ET before we go uh, interstellar. Yeah, C. Seti, like Stanton, Stanton silly uh, uh, f effort to investigate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, what is space density of technology of, of uh, uh, technology, civilization in galaxy in numbers? Yeah. Uh, if number is not small, so now we're getting into uh, the Drake equation. Yeah, the and, Drake equation, exactly. And uh, talking about how many civilizations out there that are technically advanced and are interstellar and are visiting us. Um, now, uh, uh, moving down, uh, travel practical, uh, pro uh, probability is high. Why no contact? That's very interesting. Uh, we are being ignored, <laughs> you know, by yeah. by ET, and we are being discreetly watched. That's that's part of the notes here. We are being discreetly watched. Um, uh, where is everybody? This is back uh, to uh, the Drake equation, and of course uh, the Fermi paradox. Fermi, and yeah. here, scroll up a minute. Hang it. You you missed one piece here. They, they're talking about this no mass abductions, not likely. You'll see that was one of the things I brought up at the end of the Wilson document. It says uh, no abductions. And everybody said, well, that's counterintelligence. They were throwing off Admiral Wilson. They're trying to give him fake stuff. So I started to look at all the people. Jacques Vallée says no, no abductions. I got an actual quote from Edgar Mitchell said no, no abductions. I got a quote from Kit Green. Kid Green says no abductions ever. And that's this whole idea that there's an event taking place, but it may not be what we actually think is going on. And I found this very significant that even here they have this idea that they're questioning the abduction thing as to what it really means. Yeah. And, and back to your point, uh, and you're right, I did uh, gloss over this, needs and desires of E.T., right? <laughs> Critical labor, <laughs> critical labor, uh, raw materials, rare elements, genetics, um, and of course, knowledge base. And then it says here, avoid right. cultural shock to us. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. Yes, it does. Even, even it does. today it does, yeah. Um, personal stories, anecdotes. Um, uh, this is uh, uh, Neary, Mike yeah, Neary. Yeah. Lieutenant oh, Colonel. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, this is interesting uh, stuff, this here. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Go ahead and go through it. Okay, so I, see, I have to repeat myself. <laughs> yeah. Um, he, they have this photo, photograph of UFOs against a rotating star, star background. Nobody was interested, so stored it in a safe drawer. So this guy tries to convince somebody, and when they won't buy the thing, this he puts... Neary puts the file or the photographs in his in his safe drawer, and uh, they were gone when he cleaned out prior to transfer. His boss and secretary had safe combos, so he gets these photographs that he think are really significant photographs. Nobody wants to buy it. He tells people he puts them in the safe drawer, and then when he he leaves to go on a transfer, the photographs are gone. They they take them out, and they talk about that. I I think it's in here. Um, uh, Ed, this Ed Speakman guy says, are we being led to the conclusion that an organization exists which sucks up all this uh, this uh, national, national. This, yeah, national into a box? This idea that, that there, there's guys that are, are, their job is to get rid of this. And then this other guy makes the comment, I think you can believe that. So they're basically admitting the fact that yes, there, there, there are people that are there. And I think... In, uh, 
Hal McConnell is the guy who was rumored to have released it to the New York Times. He talks about an associate, knew a man who got out of the Air Force and joined an organization which collects and burns such items. This idea that there are people out there who are going to collect the good UFO material and they're going to destroy it and get rid of it so you can't prove the case. And I've, I found this page absolutely fascinating that these guys are having this discussion. And the guy says, you know, is, it, is that what we're to believe? And the guy says, yeah, I think that's what we're going to believe. This is what's going on. And they're actually buying this whole story that this is actually going on. And it, it, doesn't it, uh, going back to um, uh, not only Oak Shannon's interview on Project Unity, but going back to the Eric Davis notes in the Wilson Davis document, about the stonewalling and the compartmentalization, the hang up of phone calls, the difficulty to uh, to have access to what is actually going on, that there is a concerted effort to conceal all of this. Yeah. And, and th that's the thing that we've always been, you know, is there is there this cabal? Is there this group? And uh, I, I know even um, um, when I in 2016, I was on. Um, coast with um uh chris uh mellon and he said in 2016 he said there is no ufo cover-up there's no program if there was a program i would have known about it and then you see suddenly a year later he's part of this program with lou alizondo and they're going to release all this kind of stuff and and so there's this idea is there actually uh, a high level group that's that's um got control of stuff and with the the, the story that was told by um um, the guy that did the Senate Appropriations Committee, the lawyer, where he told Jesse Marcel Jr., uh, Dick D'Amato, told Jesse Marcel Jr., he said, uh, I want to tell you this is all for real. He points to the Majestic book and he bangs on it. And they're in a, in a skiff as well underneath the Capitol. And he said, this is for real. And then Jesse said, I know it's for real. What are you going to do about it? And he said, well, if it's up to me, I would have released it yesterday, but it's not up to me. I'm just here to find out how much the security is costing. And you yeah, see this, yeah. this idea that there is actually this group and now you've heard about these 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 programs that Hal Putoff talks about. These I can't remember what the name of the program was, but these programs that exist. And they're right there. So the idea is to say, well, Lou Elizondo was head of the UFO program. Which UFO program is he ahead of? Now the rumor is that he's heading up the program for the this the space the space. Uh, no, he's not. This is well. This is the rumor that's going around. This is the, the that's, thing. That's, is, is, that's that's social media uh, creating stuff. Okay, but that's the thing. But that's the debate that people have. Is there actually a group up there of people right. who know more than we do? Or you hear Lou Elizondo talking, and he says, "Well, I have to watch what I say." And when he says that, it indicates to me there's somebody above him who knows more about the, the this situation. Like, how would he? How would somebody know that he broke security unless somebody above him knows more than he does and knows when he's breaking security clearance and when he's not breaking security clearance? There's a bunch of people. That appears to be that what these guys are talking about. There's a group up there. It may be a black group. It may be a, a, a you know a, a group that's compartmentalized that knows what's going on and will come down. And once you become public, as was in this this reference in the Jack Ballet's book, once it becomes public, they throw the 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 uh, the, this, the the thing in the gears to shut the program down because they don't want any programs running. That there is actually these high level groups that are running or Tom DeLong when Tom DeLong went to the skiff in Lockheed Skunk Works and the and the head scientist says to him what do you what do you what do you know how did they get here and he says I think consciousness is involved and then he said the head scientist said now you're talking and that's all he would talk about for 45 minutes was consciousness as if they have this idea of how this thing actually operates which is what I've come to it's got more to do with consciousness than people really will give it credit for. And yeah, yeah, um, I'm, I'm a little concerned about how, uh, you know, it's like the game of telephone that we used to play as kids and uh, Lou Elizondo's role in the Space Force. Now, he may be a consultant. Uh, well, what is he then? What, I mean, you tell me well, what he is then. Well, you know, quite frankly, uh, to be a member of the Space Force, you're enlisted you're enlisted. You're wearing a uniform. Okay, that's that's a whole nother situation. And until Lou is in uniform, um, and and we see pictures of that, he's not enlisted in the Space Force. You need a DD-214 and everything else, and you wouldn't be on Twitter talking about it. That's, that's it. That's it. 
And so, so you're saying so, he's not even part of Space Force? No, maybe as a contractor, but as a civilian. But you're guessing. I mean, you're guessing the same way. You're guessing in, in the opposite direction. You're no, guessing. What? I'm guessing. We don't know. That's the thing is, is there all these rumors are running around. And because there's no there's no openness, it's all secrecy. The rumors run amok. That's True. why we have all the rumors is because there's so much secrecy. Yeah, true. Except Grant, um, I was just at uh, Space Force Base Vandenberg. It's not an Air Force Base. It's now a Space Force Base. I was just there. I went on base and I watched a launch. Okay. I was around members of the Space Force, security teams, everything else. Everybody, it's, it's, it, you're in uniform. I have pictures of me with Space Force personnel with my arms around them. You are enlisted. You're enlisted. But you're you not, have a job. You that, have a job. There is nobody uh, running around there as, as a civilian claiming to be a member of the Space Force. No, it's like saying you're in the Army, but you're not. You can't be, you can't say you're in the Army. You may be a consultant to something but you know you, you have to be enlisted to be in the space force um so if, if lou is enlisted then he's enlisted well okay that's a different or it could story. be a contractor and, and a contractor but you're not that's not a member of the space force well you, but, it's, but it's still space force i mean you're you're you were playing word no. games here and that's what i'm saying it's this not, is, uh, 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 grant it's not word games if you're a contractor to the United States Army, you're a contractor to the United States Army. You're not a member of the United States Army. It's a difference. But, but, but it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a word game. I believe it's a word game they're playing. I mean, you're, you're a contractor. You're really not with us, but we're paying you. And it's coming out of another budget. And this, this company owns this company. And you get paid out of this company. But this company is actually doing it. And, and they, they play these games all the time where they move the money around. And nobody knows where the money's coming from. And that's the problem with secrecy. When we have this secrecy, all this stuff happens. There's all these stories. There's all these rumors. And we have to guess. What option do we have right, but to guess right. what's going on? Yeah, because nobody's my, telling us. That's what I said to you, Jimmy. <laughs> in terms of what Congress has learned, what have you learned from Congress? Absolutely nothing, except the fact that they are doing an investigation. It's all behind closed doors. It's all under secrecy. It's all going into the black world. We don't know anything except there was 144 sightings. End of story. Keep paying your taxes and shut up. That's what they're right. doing. That's exactly it. And and again, I'll go back to my point. Um, the research that the UFO community has done into Wilson Davis, uh, Oak Shannon, these notes is more work that, I mean, why than what has been presented to us? The UFO community has done this on their own. And why, why doesn't, uh, why isn't Chris Mellon talking about uh, Oak Shannon? Why isn't Chris Mellon talking about uh, Eric Davis and the Wilson Davis docs? You know, this this is extraordinary. And they're talking about secrecy and it's here right in front of them. This is this is work. I, I don't get it. If you know everything, why don't you know about this? Well, they are being asked. I mean, Lou Alessandro has been asked how many times about the Wilson document and he walks around it, which indicates that he knows something, but he's not talking about it. I mean, they've awesome. been asked. I don't know if Mellon's been asked, but Elizondo for sure has been asked. I've heard him being asked about the, the thing and the same they ask you know nolan and he talks in his little rhymes and riddles and you sort of get the indication that okay he knows and he gave somebody a briefing and all this kind of stuff and and that's the problem is we still have a lot of secrecy that we're that we're fighting through and and that's what the canadian said in 1950s the most highly classified subject in the united states and there's no, there's a lot of high level secrecy and everybody's keeping it to themselves. And, the, and the, one of the problems they have in the terms of secrecy is they don't know anything. I maintain that beyond the, the UFOs being here, they don't really know a heck of a lot in terms of the consciousness and how that's all fits together. And therefore they, they want to be secret because they don't want to give their cards to the Russians and to the Chinese. So I don't blame them for the secrecy, but the secrecy is causing the rumors. Yeah. And, and uh, again, uh, social media is is creating some of these statements. Um, I haven't heard uh, uh, anything definitive from anybody uh, about Lou being a member of the Space Force, a consultant. OK. All right. Um, and it may not have anything to do with UFOs, by the way. Could be with satellite. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think there's any chance of that. Yeah, so. Not, no chance. Jimmy, no chance. <laughs> okay, so now uh, let's go to this next page here. Uh, Jack Houck, 
uh, recovered um, uh, materials found. Um, and let's and let's go through this because this is uh, again uh, very significant because they mentioned angel hair, yeah. which uh, is something that hasn't been talked about in the UFO community in quite a while. But this is 1985. Um, yellow national um, uh, uh, polystyrene, conventional uh, yellow material, conventional polystyrene, yeah. paper tape, paper tape, and metal slivers. A uh, one by one millimeter shavings chaff, uh, perfect dimensions. Uh, can you comment on this page? Uh, well, the metal is. Um, I think they at at some some point refer to the Brazilian thing that they have some of the Brazilian stuff. I'm not sure what the metal shavings are. The ha angel hair is. I always talk about in the UFO community that the the intelligence behind the phenomenon is playing a game that they do this, then they do this like 1895, they're flying around in wooden ships for propellers. And then they change to this type of craft. And, to this kind of, and the angel hair, most people really don't even know what it is because it hasn't happened for many years. It was in the fifties, sixties, seventies where UFOs would fly over and they would l leave this sort of a, a cloud, almost like a web of white stuff hanging from trees and people would collect this stuff. In fact, the 1952 piece that came to Canada, there was a CIA guy packaged it for the Canadians and they put some angel hair in the box with the 1952 piece which came to Canada. When it arrived in Canada, the angel hair had to completely disappeared. And that was the whole idea behind angel hair. It would sort of disappear. You'd have it in your dissolve. hand and it would, just, it would dissolve right. and you could never get it analyzed. But th this is with the, in those days. But now angel hair doesn't happen anymore. And, and I maintain that's happened with a lot of ufo stuff that we really don't have landing traces anymore we don't have ufos with windows anymore we it's almost like the the intelligence is turning the pages of a book it does this then it does this starts cattle mutilations it stops cattle mutilations then it does crop circles then it does this and it's almost like it's dropping these little breadcrumbs and keeping us going and the mistake we make in the ufo communities we always think that what happened today happened in 1975 and i was in 75 and i can right. tell you it was a completely different world than it is now None of the stuff that was being talked about now was talked about in 1975. None of it. The first, I remember the first crash, saw, or the first alien body uh, thing was done at Dayton Air Force, Dayton uh, MUFON conference. I remember there, Len Stringfield was giving it. I remember there was a threat. I was to talk to him. Suddenly they said, oh, he's been moved to another hotel because there was a, a, a threat against his death. That was the first time they talked about alien bodies was at that conference, Len Stringfield. I remember that clearly. That was like in 1978. But before then, we'd never heard about this kind of stuff. It was just not talked about. And now it's a completely different world, almost like we've advanced greatly beyond understanding of 1975 in terms of the fact that consciousness this is part of this thing that it's more complex than we think it is that there may even be like you had this whole thing about the drake equation that was almost the old school now it's the idea where uh the people are talking about the fact that they may be able to move instantaneously the I, the idea of non-local time and space that they can actually move from place to place just by moving into dimensions dimensions weren't talked about in 1975 there's no way it's, so it's a different world than it is now and so people are struggling here you've got very simple stuff now you you've got uh you know uh jacques valet with this whole collection of stuff and they're using very elaborate machines where tests were done on this metal back in 1975 and they said there's nothing to it and now they've got this new equipment that nolan has and they can do more and they suddenly detect that the isotopes have changed so we we're moving along and we're getting more advanced and more sure of this thing to the point where now everybody would say if you go in the in the in the street and say do you think ufos exist everybody would say yeah yeah they exist it's a different world especially after 2017 when the new york times broke the story it's a completely different world and people have to realize it's a different world than it was in 1985 when this document was written and there there was uh going back to the oak shannon interview um oak really caught my attention when he said that, uh, you know, after Vietnam, he was able to choose his next assignment. And he decided to go back to officer training school in Monterey, California, where he, I, I think he said he got a degree in physics, right? And while he was there, he partnered up with, I, I, his name escapes me now, um, but somebody else in the Navy at the school that developed the theory of a fifth dimension. Right. And and Oak spent a lot of time talking about the interdimensional aspect of this uh, when we talk about a fifth dimension and the ability to 
uh, go from a, a, another dimension into our dimension. And this is how this, th- that they're there. They're just going from one dimension into another, which in this case is a dimension here where we can see them. I thought that was extremely profound by Oak. Yeah, and they and they they it sounded like they produced some some material, some written material. And what you're going to see, I think, with the other thing I've, I've noticed is I call them the young guns. These young guys that are in the UFO community who know how to work a computer, they know how to search stuff. And what you're going to see now, as I said before, is you're going to see people rip this document apart, and they're going to start looking for for these papers, did the Oak Shannon papers, right on on this fifth dimension stuff like that. You're going to see a lot of stuff that's tied into this where these guys will pull out new details and uh, stuff that, that, that I never even knew just based upon these documents. So this is like a, a breadcrumb thing for these very smart guys to take the next step. And, uh, and he said, Oak Shannon, again, uh, I'm just paraphrasing here. Um, I've watched the interview multiple times. Um, he said that he took, uh, this fifth dimension theory, which is what he called it, um, to Los Alamos and, yeah. and, and presented it to the physicists there. Um, and it was an uphill battle, uh, trying to get them to accept this fifth dimension theory, uh, into the world of physics. What did you think about that comment? Well, that was, that's what I mean. I mean, he, he, he was working with this other guy and I think he said somebody killed it or something. Somebody, uh, killed the project. He was. They were trying to convince these higher ups, and that may be in how he got involved. Was John Alexander was at Los Alamos, and and so when when Oak was there, he was probably talking about this stuff, and his buddy was talking about it, and they were trying to convince people and and sell their thing to get funding. The same thing. That's how it works in science. You've got to convince people that you've got a good idea that they should fund, and so they were trying to sell this thing, and and and, and so. Alexander would have figured out this guy was into UFOs and said, oh, come to this meeting. And John said all these people paid their own way, that they, this was not something that the government funded. They all paid their own way to this to this meeting. And so that's how uh, Oak got involved by this fifth dimensional thing. I'd be interested to see. I'm pretty sure someone will uh, go and find in the literature, the scientific literature, the actual writings by uh, Oak Shannon. I would say that that's changed now because Oak Shannon is still you see it's a material version of uh, the fifth dimension is still material. And I'm going to say that it's going to be, it's going to be consciousness. It's going to be Max Planck that says consciousness is primary. That's where it's the UFO community is going in terms of the, when the people fly the ship, they talk about, you use your mind to fly the ship. The ship is alive. You become one with the craft. You can go instantaneously. I talked to the one guy who said it was one second and he was outside the Milky Way, which is like 50 to 70,000 light years. He went in one second. That's the kind of stuff. So when you see where they're talking about multiple lifetimes, you're one the way trip and all this kind of stuff, or you know the, this whole idea of interstellar travel in the physical world, but in the in the interdimensional world, the idea of if, if time and space is non-local, if it's all non-local, you can move from one place to the other. And that's what Eric Davis is working on. The whole idea of wormholes, that, that not this idea that they're talking here, this advanced thing that you can actually flip from one part of the universe to the other. I think that's where it's going. And I, I say Max Planck said consciousness is primary. And a lot of the early quantum physicist guys said you can't get behind consciousness. There are all these things. Consciousness is primary. Consciousness creates matter. And I say until we get that solid, we are never going to understand the UFO thing. We got it backwards. We think that matter creates consciousness. It's the other way around. And that's the key to the the whole UFO mystery is this consciousness factor. Now, uh, when we come back after the break, uh, here's the page on Woodbridge. And we're going to break this whole page down. But uh, at the bottom of these notes, it says this. Yeah. Film made and flown to Germany. Holy crap. What does this mean? We'll talk about all of this when we come back after this short break. Our guest tonight, the one and only. It's Grant Cameron week here on Fade to Black. <laughs> and, and make sure in the last segment that we get to Bobby Ray Inman. That's the major part of the document. I'll leave that to you, my friend. <laughs> we'll be right back after this short break. This is fade to black stay with us
You're listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the X. Hey, what up, y'all? It's your girl Vivica Fox here, and you are listening to my boy, Jimmy Church, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Despite popular opinion, reading a book will not make you smarter. But listening to Jimmy Church will. Hello, Fader Knots. Jimmy Church here. You've seen me with my thunderstorm. Now you can purify the air in your home and get healthy, clean, fresh smelling air and eliminate odors just like I do right here in the bunker. The Eden Pier Thunderstorm uses Oxy technology that naturally sends out O3 molecules into the air, which seek out odors and air pollutants in your home and destroys them. It's called a thunderstorm because it purifies the air just like after a thunderstorm. And right now, you can save $200 on an Eden Pier Thunderstorm 3 pack for whole home protection. With this special offer, you're getting three units for under $200. Seriously. Go to EdenPureDeals.com and use Fader 3. Shipping is free and it's easy. Just scroll down. You'll see my name right there, Jimmy Church. Click on it and get your deal today. That's EdenPureDeals.com. This is Billy Carson, founder and CEO of ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. ForbiddenKnowledge.tv is the fastest growing and one of the most watched networks in the world. And I would like to personally invite you to check out our expanding library of TV, film, lectures, and special presentations. ForbiddenKnowledge.tv has over 6,000 videos covering lost history, health, UFOs, spirituality, and our future. We are committed to our community. And with my personal invitation, you can right now get your own free 30-day membership at Forbidden ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. Your own library of information starts today at ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. Your one million gigawatt paranormal powerhouse, KUNXDB, VX. Are you ready to read about true paranormal events? Unex Media publishes nonfiction books about UFOs, ghosts, and haunted places, time anomalies, cryptid creatures, and more. Just like KUNXDB Radio, it's all about unexplained phenomena. Visit www.unxmedia.com to see our list of great book titles by Debbie Ziegelmeyer, Gene Walker, Devin Listrom, Wayne Lawrence, Bill Spicer, and yours truly, Margie Kay. That's unxmedia.com. Introducing the Game Changer Blend from River Moon Coffee that delivers a customized blend made specifically for the Fader Knots. If the game is rigged, change the game it's a bolder cup with some bite game changer is the coffee of choice for those that prefer an organic dark roast that is slightly lighter and milder but it's still dark with wild notes of pecans and chocolate with a rich balanced full-bodied cup that is roasted to perfection for a great coffee to start your day as an after dinner coffee or anywhere in between Artisan, small batch, roasted to perfection. USDA certified organic, all River Moon coffee is freshly roasted and packaged in the USA. Just go to rivermooncoffee.com or click on the banners over on our site and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. rivermooncoffee.com Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? you love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in paranormal talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. It's not a lifestyle we chose. We were born this way. This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Welcome back, Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Man, what a show tonight. 
Grant Cameron is with us. And, and Grant, we've just got a little bit of time left here. And, and thank you, man. You've had a very busy day. You've got a crazy week in, in front of you. And thank you for taking the time tonight uh, for this uh, very, very important show. Um, and right before the break, uh, I, I brought up the page about uh, Rendlesham Woodbridge. And uh, all of the comments uh, are, are are what we're familiar with, except for this last line here, which says, film made and flown to Germany. I always suspected that, right? Uh, we, you know, we heard about video cameras being present and, and film cameras and and uh, but nothing was ever mentioned about what was filmed and 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 or photographed. Uh, but here it states uh, that a film was made and flown to Germany. Yeah, that was always the rumor. The thing is, who gave this briefing? So somebody would have been the person describing the story. It may have been John Alexander because the story was John Alexander was involved with uh, the briefing stuff with uh, he, he showed up there. And so it'd be interesting to find out uh whether oak shannon remembers or who, who and maybe someone else will come forward and tell us who actually gave this briefing who's the one that said uh there was a film flown to germany because that was the rumored story was that uh, the plane arrived from germany and they loaded all this the film on there and and took off with it uh were you surprised uh that that oak shannon uh spoke uh you know and and did an interview yeah, I was pre I was pretty surprised. Yeah, I was. Um, I was yeah, too. I, I he I know he was being approached by a lot of people, and I, that's the same thing that's going to happen here. Is, is once these names become public, people are going to start going after. Him. And Oak Shannon is probably he, as you know, the comment he made today. I don't know how this is going to play out, and he's probably going to get all sorts of requests for interviews now. And I I I sort of pity him because. I mean, this is some, not something he really wanted. I mean, he, this was not his game. He sort of got stuck in the document. And he sort of got stuck with these notes coming out and stuff like that. And I, I see his place as very important in history. I don't think he really sees it that way. Uh, let's uh, let's get to this uh, Bobby Ray Inman. And before we get there, uh, as I scroll down, um, uh, here's Cash Landrum. Uh, uh, the organizational chart, which and here's I, this thing with the president, where they've got the no, where they get uh, get authority. So they got Keyworth, like get authority. Keyworth was the science advisor to Reagan. Scroll up a bit. Your uh, so Keyworth was the um, the uh, the Ra Reagan's go yeah right there. Uh, say get authority. So they're trying to get authority for their plan. And, and whether it was Keyworth said no. Keyworth was the science advisor to the president. Uh, Poindexter was the um, the um, national security advisor to Reagan. He's and it looks like he said no. The P is the president said no. VP no. And then uh, Doctor Cooper, I don't know who that is, said no. And then uh, maybe it was Don K E R R. And uh, I, I can't remember his position, but that's what you're going to see is people are going to grab these names and they're going to realize these guys are still alive and they're going to go for interviews. And we're going to start to learn who these guys were, why they were in the meeting, what do they know about UFOs? Because these are guys at the top secret level. These are not guys who are interested in the subject. These are guys who had information that were brought into these meetings to try to put it all together. Now, uh, I'm, I'm going to scroll down uh, to uh, the list of names uh, that was at yeah. this meeting. And if there's something that you, okay, but here's attendees and others. Uh, me, which is. Uh, yeah, that was the funniest part when he when he said, when when he got asked the question, uh, would that you be, would that me, me, me be you? And he said, yeah, something like the effect. Yeah, yeah, that 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 uh, me could be me. <laughs> it's like he sort of yeah, that's me. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Bill uh, Wilkinson from the yeah. CIA. Yeah, I don't, I don't know this name. I mean, that's the thing. Right, 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 right. Hal right. McConnell was the guy that was rumored to have leaked it to the New York Times uh, from the NSA. NSA, yeah. Um, John, uh, John Alexander. Alexander. Uh, First double mind. Everybody knows that one. Uh, BDM. Yeah. Hal put off. Jack Hauk. Yeah. Um, Ed Speckman from Inscom, yeah. uh, Bill Souter from McDonnell Douglas, uh, a no name from BDM. the BDM. Yeah, that's interesting. Yep. And uh, what is the USDRE? Um, I had looked it up. Uh, USDRE. Um, I, I, I tried to find it today too, as no, well. No, I, 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 ha I had it, but it's like, uh, yeah, whatever. But it's 
Okay. And so, the, guy, yeah. the guy's name is unknown. Somebody will figure it out. I guarantee you within a couple of days, you're going to know who the guy is. Uh, really Ralph. Right. Ralph Freeman, yeah, uh, uh, no association. Yeah, and then, of he's course, a new guy. Yeah, McDonald have- Douglas, you have the two. That's where Lou is making this reference to. Uh, it was the, if there, if you have hardware, was it e- evenly divided between all the aerospace contractors? That was that idea. So here we have McDonald Douglas, Bob Wood, and Lockheed. Where, and it seems like there's more people from the Lockheed. And then the Jansen guy and this other, this Don guy, I'd never heard of them before. Ron Blackburn, I always pointed out to people, there's a very interesting interview by uh, uh, Jerry Pitt, Pippen. If you look at the Google search, Jerry Pippen and Ron Blackburn, there's a fascinating interview that Jerry Pippen does with Ron Blackburn talking about alien hardware and his inventions and his patents. It's a fascinating interview. Uh, again, from Lockheed, Lockheed Skunk Word, I would yeah. assume. Uh, Mill Jensen and, again, Don Kemble. Um, uh, and then Gary Wright is said to McConnell, nine months, 30 to 40 solid sightings in Alaska. Right. Um, they named the island here most toward Alaska, some to the USSR. Uh, this is before the fall of the Soviet Union. Um, and then uh, back to uh, the Psy aspect of this that you mentioned earlier, a Israeli book about. Uh, uh, Soviet about work being done. Yeah. Ahead uh, far, of us. But Israel is ahead of them. Exclamation mark. <laughs> yeah. Okay, list of who we have contacted security possible task and uh again uh develop theories I, I always thought uh was uh pretty interesting. Um and then I want to get to uh there's Bill Sauter, McDonald Douglas. Uh here's the organization and the research plan. Um and uh now <clears throat> Database, theory, sensors, samples. We got Jacques Vallée's name right yeah. here. And, and he's now doing this, this whole thing by using artificial intelligence to go through the data so you can you can get the patterns. And Vallée's now working on that. So that's been extended to this day. They've, they've actually started to develop the database thing. Now, were you surprised to see Tesla's name here? Well, that, that's, again, one of the rumored stories that, that, that all the people on high levels were interested in Tesla and what happened to his material. I think there's even a reference to the, they were looking for Tesla's material and they couldn't. They couldn't yeah, 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 yeah. You caught that. It was just, yeah. uh, 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 it, it, it's further down in the notes. Yeah. But, uh, and it was the way that uh, uh, what Tesla's uh, uh, files were called. We'll, we'll get to that. Uh yeah. It escapes me right now. But here we go. More dollar signs. And I keep referencing this. Uh, this was in. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Where's the Bobby Ray Inman? I think it's higher, higher up. It's just a single page. That was one of the ones I put on the Internet some time ago. Just the page to. to I thought it was the most interesting part of the whole thing. Uh, do, 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 do. Page all by itself. That's all you have is two lines on the page. So it's simple to find. There's nothing except for that. No, maybe oh. I guess down, maybe. So did, did I? No, I'm at the end. Oh, like the Iranian jet. Yeah, it must be here. It's above there. I think it's the next page up here. No, no, that's Woodbridge. Okay, I can describe what's on the page. If you can't, him is maybe a hit. Oh, Kirk, this is the D- Richard Doty sighting. I, I'm pretty sure. And take a look at what they say. Many mistakes in the report don't take too seriously. I'm pretty sure that August the 8th, 80, I'm not 100% sure, was the Richard Doty sighting or report. Cuban inter- intercepts, that's one they, that Stanton Friedman tried oh, to get. Here it, is. here it is. Here it is. Major engineering. This is the most interesting part of the whole document. And that was that it appears that they had a discussion. The way it seems to work that they had, like in the morning, they would discuss cattle mutilations. Then they discussed this. Then they, And you'd go from these different. So they brought up major engineering project. And the only thing under there was Bobby Ray Inman's name. So it, it was a topic of discussion. And that, that's all they had. And Bobby Ray Inman uh, was the SAIC. Richard, uh, that uh, Greer always talks about SAIC was a key component to this whole cover-up thing. And Bobby Ray Inman, whether he was a contractor or whether he worked for SAIC or whatever it was, it was linked to SARC. And Bobby Ray Inman's name is interesting because 
Uh, this is 1985 and 1988. The rumor was around that Bobby Ray Inman was the MJ-12 guy. He was the guy that was in charge of the remote viewing. And that's when Bob Exler went. He got the business card. He went to uh, um, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, there was a conference at the Institute for Defense Analysis where uh, Bob uh, McGuire came from. And they, they, he bet he met Bobby Raymond and he said, I'd like to meet MJ 12. And that he started, had this discussion and then he had the phone call with Bobby Raymond where he's talking to Bobby Raymond about, about crash flying saucers and MJ 12 and all this kind of stuff. And that ties into the, the Wilson leak document because the whole thing hinges on this fact that the Wilson was briefed by Greer and uh, Admiral Miller and uh, Stephen Greer and uh, Edgar Mitchell in 1997 about the whole fact that you're being snowed and uh, you're in control of this project and you don't have control of it. And that's when Wilson starts to look. And as if you've heard the interview, Greer does an interview with Admiral Wilson. And Wilson tells the whole story in this interview. And he says, when we left the room, the Wilson's office, the Wilson's assistant said to me, you know that MJ-12 you're talking about? We know all about that group, but we here at the the uh, uh, Joint Chiefs for the uh, Intelligence do not have a need to know. That's what Miller said he was told as he walked out of the room. So again, you have this connection between Bobby Ray Inman and the the, the MJ-12 thing. And there was another story told where, where Greer told the story that um, that Goldwater had phoned him. That he Goldwater had said to Stephen Greer, so who's running the program? And he said, Bobby Raymond's running the program. And and Goldwater said, well, really? He's my friend. I'll phone him up. And so Greer says, yeah, phone him up and tell him. And uh, I actually found, I have one of the collections I have, I have the entire collection of, of Goldwater's UFO files, 190 pages, all the people he talked to and stuff. I've got the whole file. And one of the letters describes the fact that he phoned Bobby Raymond and it mentions Stephen Greer's name. And Stephen Greer tells the story that, that, that Goldwater, who was head of the intelligence for the Senate, his daughter had said, I was there when my father made the phone call. He phoned Bobby Ray Inman. I have never seen my father so shaken in his life. And he never talked about UFOs ever again after that call with Bobby Ray Inman. So yeah. Bobby Raymond's a key figure in ufology. He's a mysterious yeah, no. figure and an interesting figure. Yeah, it, it, for those that have been uh, researching this subject uh, over the, the this you know last four or five decades, Bobby Ray Inman's name is central in all of this. And but you know, I'm growing up. You know, I'm in my 20s. I, I'm in my 30s, and I'm looking at these documents, Grant, uh, just like everybody else is. And over and over again, there was Bobby Ray Inman and and his comments about this and this this. To have this pop up in this meeting in 1985, top secret meeting, extraordinary. Yeah. Does this confirm everything, all of the rumors about Bobby Ray Inman that have gone back uh, uh, to the 1960s, 1950s, probably? Bobby oh, oh. Ray Inman. Yeah, Bobby Raymond, who was apparently a four-star admiral at 49 years old. That's I mean, right. I mean, it, it, but it may be that they just knew the rumor. That they they didn't really have anything other than we've heard Bobby Rainman is running the thing and they didn't know any more than you and I. But that may be what this means as well. But either they knew the rumor or they discussed Bobby Rainman running this this uh, major engineering and the major engineering project. Now, um, in in closing, um, where where do we go from here? This is uh, obviously a lot of analysis needs to go into uh, both of these packets of notes. Um, and reviewing the names and, and so forth. But 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 where do we go from here? And what does this do to support the Admiral Wilson Davis document? Well, I, I think it's just, it's going to be an avalanche of researchers who are really good. I mean, even uh, Juliano Marinkovic has actually linked all this stuff into, he's got the the whole index of all the Wilson leak, all the, the briefings, all the interviews, all that stuff. He's all linked it all together. This is already linked in there. So you see these people are already working on this. They're putting it together. There's some really smart people in ufology. I, I, you know, I used to say, we used to have this joke, you know, that everybody was old in ufology. And then the one guy was asked, do you have a, a citizens, an old uh, 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 seniors uh, discount 
for getting into the UFO conference. So the guy said, if I had a senior's discount, everybody would get in for for discount. And it, it was the idea that there was no young people. But I I actually can say there are a lot of young people that I highly respect in the UFO community who are really smart and who are going to rip this thing apart and are going to you're going to see all sorts of revelations from this in terms of the names and how it fits together. I I think it's all over. I mean, especially if they have got immunity for witnesses. It's over. It's game, set, match. This is over. If you get these people in a public hearing and they and you get guys like Eric Davis, who I knew and I knew who he was talking to. He was talking to people higher than Wilson. I knew who he was talking to. I knew what this guy's a former intelligence officer. He's not a stupid guy and he can't lie. You get these people in front of Congress in an open hearing. It's game, set, match. It's over. The cover up is over. And that's what I saw when I first saw the document. And I'm more convinced now that it that is basically over. They're using the Wilson document to try track this this fact that the, the the people have been scammed they've been running this program without congressional oversight and they're going to get to the bottom of it they realize they've been had and it's it's inter, it's like it's unlike anything in u.s politics there there is totally everybody's on board it's not one party versus the other party this is one thing where everybody's talking on the same uh song sheet and i i think it's over i mean personally myself i think it's just a matter of time what uh, is eric davis next does he need to uh, step up? Well, he's got the security clearance. He's working at aerospace, and that's what I asked uh, uh, somebody, and they said, oh, everybody's in aerospace. Anybody in NASA is with aerospace. So he's got this contract. He's, he's got a family. He's got a job. And I think that I've heard you know, the rumor that people have talked to that he said, yeah, if, if he was uh, uh, given immunity, he would talk. And that's all I think it takes. I mean, Eric Davis knows, maybe Hal Putoff knows the most, but Eric Davis, you, you have no idea what this guy knows. I mean, I knew him and I knew him at the time when the Wilson League thing uh, broke. It may have been exactly the same time. I knew him back at the, that early stage uh, when he was laid off by NIDS. He is an extremely smart guy and he he's aggressive. He's like me. I've always seen this thing as a chess game. I'm here to win. I'm here to figure out how this thing works. I'm not here to make money or do anything. And Eric Davis is the same way. He's relentless. He has contacts and he's just trying to get this, this story and he's putting it together. And uh, he has a tremendous amount of material and he's not going to hold back. He's not going to cover. If he's given immunity, he's going to stand up there and say this thing's for real. He's going to tell you where it's where the stuff is. He's going to tell you exactly how. To, I heard some stories that they told me back in the day, which I won't repeat, but I mean, they know a lot more than what you think they know um richard dolan uh uh went out uh as far as he could uh a couple of years ago and said uh and i'm i'm, I'm paraphrasing here i'm going to quote yeah. him uh that this was the ufo document of the century that's pretty close to you know and he took a lot of criticism you know uh but that, if people that, always forget that richard dolan was shown two pages of the document by one of the key people. And he knows who the key person was that showed him the document. And when the document was leaked, he phoned the guy and he said, what do you say now? And he said, oh, I guess the toothpaste is out of the tube. That's so right. when, when you and I know the story, we know there's more to this. It's not just a document. This is a document that was shown, two pages were shown to Richard Dolan 10 years ago. And when he described it on your show, there's no doubt he was talking about the document. That is game set match because it proves that these guys had the document 10 years ago and the documents real and these guys were all involved. So I, that's the important thing that Richard has that confirmation before the document became public. He was talking about it. Um, you just mentioned it. So I'm just going to expand on it just a little bit. Um, Richard said, uh, I made the phone call, right? I called the, yeah. I called the guy and, and, and I know who, you know, uh, Richard called. Yeah. And I got to tell you, uh, the statement, you know, the toothpaste, right, uh, statement from this individual um, is is mind blowing. Yeah. And 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 for Richard, that is part of the re you know, as he's doing all of this research um, and he is as black and white and as as pragmatic as anybody that I know. Right. It's just about the diet. It's about the facts. And, and when he said to me, church. This is a real document. And this is why. Well, I've 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 cool. got to go with that because I, you know, um, I will never say anything. Um, I have asked 
I asked Richard, dude, you got it. Yeah, who cares at this point? Just come out. No, um, he's got relationships and he's not going to blow that relationship. But Richard knows what he was told. Yeah. And, and that's good enough for me, Grant. Yeah, and he gave me that assurance early on because, I mean, I was pretty sure, but I didn't have absolute proof. But when I heard Richard tell that story to me in confidence, I said, oh, okay. And mm -hmm. that's why Richard never looked back when he got all the criticism, remember, when we <laughs> first came out? And he just looked the other way and said, tell him to go to hell. Like He knew and I knew that, that this was for real, that, that we did never worried about it being a hoax or we were being taken or whatever. Because if you know who the guy was, he'd go, oh, okay, and I'll understand what's going on here. Uh, what a great, uh, what a great day! What a great conversation! And 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 thank you, uh, thank you. Uh, Grant. Look, uh, going back three years ago, with uh, the look on your face, <laughs> you were scared, and 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 I I totally understand. But but look where we are today. Yeah. All right. So just just thank you for everything, my friend. Have a great week. You're going to be extremely busy. Uh, and I have the feeling we're going to circle back in a couple of weeks and 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 we'll have more uh, developments on all of this. Thank you so much. Uh, my best to Nicole. Thank you. Uh, Melinda Leslie is saying that I need to call her right after the show. I'm going to do that as well. And be up uh, all night. <laughs> so are you. Grant, thank you so much, my friend. Have a great night. Thank you. Grant Cameron. Uh, th this is uh, truly uh, an explosive uh, development. Uh, we're going to follow up on all of this uh, throughout the week. Uh, tomorrow night, I want everybody to understand what I'm going to do. Uh, for those of you out there that that uh, are not familiar with the Wilson Davis document, that's fine. Uh, tomorrow night, I am going to do a complete show on the Wilson Davis document. I'm going to walk all of us through it. And uh, it will uh, be uh, a, a clarification on everything that was discussed tonight uh, with Grant. And then on Wednesday night, Richard Dolan is going to be here uh, to uh, give his insight. You know, he's doing research. He probably did uh, his show uh, tonight or maybe he's doing it tomorrow night uh, over at Richard Dolan Members. Again, on all of this, he said to me earlier today, he goes, dude, this is all I'm talking about this week. Uh, it's going to be amazing. And uh, so we're going to be doing that Wednesday night. And then Thursday night, of course, is another fader night with open lines all night long. Wow, what a show tonight. What a fantastic show. I'm looking at myself. This camera is, uh, is, is pretty good. Yeah, I, 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 didn't, I didn't really take a look uh, tonight. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I think uh, I think I've got that dial. I don't have to touch it anymore. This is Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. It is it is <laughs> it's going to be a heck of a week here on Fade to Black. Again, uh, thank you, Grant Cameron. Uh, what a perfect conversation tonight, and he has been at the center of all of this for a very long time. This is his week to shine for sure. Fade to Black is produced by Hill J. Palm, Renee, Dennis, and Kevin. Announcers are Steve Harder, Gene Vitoa, Mark D. Kovar. Webmaster is Drew the Geek Music, Doug Aldrich. Intro, Space Boy. Spaceboymusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network, and this broadcast is owned and copyrighted 2022 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network, Inc. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tomorrow night, Wilson Davis, two and a half hour deep dive special right here on Fade to Black. Stay tuned for that. Wednesday night, Richard Dolan. Until then, I want everybody to be safe. Go back, Lee Tappy.